What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Fantasy Files podcast, where we talk about our favorite fantasy series and topics. We are your co-hosts, Spencer and Gabe, joined by JKD Animator, who we will introduce in just a moment. <laughs> Today, we're chatting about Dragons and Demons, the fifth installment in the King's Dark Tidings series by Kelcade. If you missed it before, check out our interview with Kelcade herself, which I will link above in the annotations somewhere up there uh, and in the description on Spotify. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more KDD, KDT content. We have a bunch on the way. Uh, and with that out of the way, let's introduce our guest and talk about what we have been reading lately. So welcome, JK. Thanks, Hello. For, thanks for joining us. Yeah. Um, you, uh, you reached out to us on, on YouTube on one of our King's Dark Tidings mm -hmm. episodes. And you were like, mm -hmm. I'd love to talk about Reskin. I'd love to talk about King's Dark Tidings. Um, so mm. we're super excited to have another fan of the series here. We talked a little bit before about you kind of going through the the audiobooks for that and whatnot. So we'll we'll mm -hmm. get into that in a minute. But first, you want to talk about what your channel is, what your YouTube channel is. Uh, yeah. So without taking too much time, I animate things, funny things, things relating to music sometimes. Generally, I think of what I do is I'm kind of like a Black South Park style kind of content <laughs> creator. Um, okay. So, yeah, if you're looking just for a quick laugh or if you like hip hop and dragon anime, that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. yeah, come check out the channel. If you're somewhere, because whether it's YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, if the characters you're watching do not have pupils, you are in the right place. OK, <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Yeah, we were we were looking at some of your content before you hopped on. We were watching one of the mm. Dragon the... Flow Z. Oh, yeah. um, Eminem, Eminem versus um, Kendrick, Kendrick. Lamar. Yeah, yeah, Kendrick Lamar. Yeah. So cool, dude. And they're like, oh, yeah. they're rapping and going like Super Saiyan. And <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. And yep. That's looked... my bag, man. That's yeah. what I'm about. I love it. Yeah. That was awesome. Um, yeah. Very cool. Ooh. So have, you know, you, you were saying that you went through the King's Dark Tidings series in audiobook on your morning drives or whatever is there any other fantasy series that you're into or anything else you've been reading lately so without taking us on a tangent there was because this was maybe when did I, I picked up that book or that series how long is it, is it five years ago seven years ago how old is it now because i yeah, feel like five, it was yeah so it, it it's been it's been a five-year gap from king's dark tidings five to king's dark tidings four and then the series had probably been going on for for like three or four years before that. Yeah, so it's probably probably at least five or six years since I started the okay, series. Cool. Yeah, at that time, my life was in a very different place where the job I had was I had to actually go to an office and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So um, it was really nice sort of discovering just fantasy audiobook novels in general. So um what are some of my favorite? Uh, obviously, Reskin, I think that one is a cut above the rest. So yeah. Yeah, what I'm interested in is hearing if anyone else has seen or read or heard of anything that's sort of on that level. Yeah. Other, the only other thing which I've heard you guys mention as well is um, Kingslayer Chronicles. Is it Kingslayer Chronicles? King Killer. King Killer, yep. King yeah. Killer Chronicles, yeah. yeah. So I would say, well, because I would say Kel Cade is my favorite author in terms of she's given me the best story Mm -hmm. I've ever yeah. read or I'm reading and the best yeah. characters in that sense, right? But then is it Patrick Rufus who writes the King Killer Chronicles? Um, yeah. Patrick, yeah. He, I've never read anything better written than than yeah. that series where yeah. the, the detail, he can, he can just yeah. write about a rock falling down a hill and it <laughs> yeah. sounds like the yep. deepest, most profound shit you've ever read or heard. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so there's something really masterful about how he takes us on his journey kind of thing. So those two in particular um, stand out. There was a lot of other ones which it's like they'll start off pretty good and then they just sort of get a bit, yeah. you know, a bit samey, samey or, you know. they Right. So, and I can't remember because I'm not really good with names. Like, uh, it's okay. it's one of them ones where if you mention the names, I'll probably know, oh, yeah, I'll take that one off. I haven't ticked that one off. Yeah. So that kind of thing. But, um, yeah, man, those two are the two that I would say are probably the best in my in, okay, in awesome. my book kind of thing. Those well, are two great picks. If if you <laughs> like uh if you like King Stark Tidings, you'll probably like Yes, Night, Night Angel, dude. Night Angel. That's what I was gonna say too. Night Angel. Yeah. The Night Angel trilogy. It's freaking awesome. Yeah. What's that one about? It sounds familiar. I don't know if I've So it's a 
it's about a boy who is kind of growing up in this orphanage and it's like the orphanage is kind of segregated into like it's in the slums and it's segregated into like these different guilds and all the guilds have to look out for themselves and they're you know just trying to find food each day and whatnot and the the main character azoth he Mm -hmm. he gets adopted by a world-class assassin and so this assassin trains him to become like the best assassin he could possibly Mm be and then there's kind of a storyline of you know it's him the first book is him kind of growing up with his master and learning mm-hmm. how to kill, kill people kill of, craft yeah. learning the skills yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh okay. it's, and it's it's got a really good story there's a couple really good twists especially near the end yeah that's All what right. you'd probably like um if you like if you like assassin stuff in general the fallen mm. blade series is really good that's by kelly mccullough Um, and that's about kind of a kind of a disgraced assassin who is like in the first book he's like a severe alcoholic and all this (laughs) stuff and he's he's just trying to get by doing whatever work he can and he's Mm. got like this um he has a living shadow called tris and so his shadow is actually like a creature and it can like shroud him in like darkness and it can like okay. help, help him shadow powers stuff. yeah yeah, that's yeah. Cool. it's really that's cool a... uh fallen blade series by kelly mccullough all right i'll definitely give those yeah mm-hmm. and then uh I, i'm sure gabe would recommend this too the dresden files it's it's not similar to king's dark tidings but it is a really good series that we enjoy quite a bit yeah you... it's a yeah urban fantasy based in chicago kind of like new day chicago um, but there's okay. wizards and fairies, and it's freaking awesome. And it's way oh, okay. deeper than it sounds. Like yeah, it- yeah, it's way. <laughs> there's a lot of depth to it. It's not yeah. just yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I'm, I'm, yeah. They sound. Now you're uh, set. Yeah. Now you're set. I'm set. Next I'm set for a little while. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Good man. And, and especially the Dresden Files have incredible audiobooks. The first couple are kind of rough because they were using a different studio. But okay. around like the third or fourth book, the audio quality gets significantly better, and they're okay. wa- they're widely known as some of the best audio books that you can that you can Thank get you. your hands okay. on. Yeah. What is um what e how many are in the series so far? <laughs> the oh, Dresden, Dresden Files. Yeah, mm. there's like seventeen. <laughs> yeah, seventeen books. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but they're short. They're, they're yeah. really oh, short. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's interesting. That's different. Right? I mean, you can, yep. yeah, yeah. You don't normally get something that long, but okay, yeah, that sounds cool. And and that's a series where you will quickly fall in love with the characters and want mm. there to be more books. Yeah. Like you will, okay, like, one of them once. Yeah, you'll be like, oh, I'm so okay. glad there's so many books in this series. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, cool. you're set, dude. There you go. No, that sounds hey Appreciate <laughs> it, guys. Pretty yeah. good way to start. Yeah, for sure. Definitely. All right. Well, uh, Gabe, have you been reading anything lately besides uh, King's Dark Tidings? Yeah. So maybe a, a year ago or so, you know, that you guys know me. I like the lit RPG kind of books and stuff, yeah. pr- progression fantasy. And mm-hmm. so I, I had read a series quite a while ago called The the Completionist Chronicles by Dakota Kraut. That's um, right. And that's, yeah. It's an eight, eight book series. And so I just recently wanted more of the same. And so I restarted that and then just finished it two days ago or yesterday before i started kdt5 okay um and so yeah it's just like right up right up my alley man it's it's about this it's about this guy who there's this this guy in the military you know he's a he's a combat medic um and they're in afghanistan or whatever um and he basically gets they they get an ied blows him up and he gets paralyzed Mm -hmm. Um, and then one of his friends in the military reaches out to him and says like hey there's this new technology and it's you know it's like a it's like a immersion capsule um he's like you could you could walk again in this capsule and so he bitterly agrees to it and he gets sent to this this you know game world i guess it's not really a game world like it is an actual real world oh um and uh yeah he just starts doing stuff there and then he later learns that the earth got destroyed and so that's that's all there is there yes to stay there and so does everybody else all the other people of earth uh, make it in there yeah Oh, that's yeah. kind of cool. It yep. it reminds me a little bit of like uh, Avatar, where yeah. mm. where the dude's like paralyzed and they send him into an avatar yep. in another world. Yep. 
That's and then he has cool. to stay there. Yeah, yeah exactly. Cool. Stay there. there. And mm. he's he, he's a ritualist, so there's lots of really cool magic. The magic reminds me a lot of the Lock Lockland Lockland series. What, what's oh, uh, uh, Foundry Side. Foundry Side. Foundry yes. Astrology, yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, lots of cool like kind of runes and magic and stuff like that. That's very scientific in its nature, which which I love. So. Okay. Cool. But yeah. Other than that, nothing. That's been it for the last week and a half, two weeks, and then cool. KDT five. Sweet. By the way, Ooh. speaking of Avatar, have you guys seen the Avatar I 2? I haven't. The sequel? I've seen, I haven't seen the film yet, just the trailers. Right. Yeah, yeah, same, same here. here. Same here. Yeah, I, I thought for sure it was going to bomb. I thought no, for I sure mean, it's, it was. <laughs> yeah, it's doing really well. Massive, dude. Because yeah. <laughs> well, mm. uh, I, like, I was like, who's asking for an Avatar <laughs> sequel? And then all of a sudden it does like two and a half billion at the box office. Yeah. Wow, I was doing <laughs> that like, well. Wow. Uh, yeah. <laughs> pretty yeah. wild yeah so i've been reading uh the first law trilogy by joe abercrombie and i'm two books deep now i just finished the second book before getting back into king's dark tidings and uh i'm really liking it Th this is a a series that i had dnf twice i had made it like 70 percent of the way through the first book two times wow and, <laughs> and i just couldn't do it and so but that was like a year and a half ago. And so I've, I've grown a lot as a reader and just I, I've grown mm. a lot in my interests and I have more patience for certain books and stuff. And so I tried it again and I really, really liked it. And it was kind of one of those times where you're like, oh, man, I can't believe I didn't like this before because <laughs> now I'm seeing all these things that are really cool about it. Um, mm. but it, but it is a hard sell to, to people because the story is really slow. Like it is just painfully slow, but the thing that you're there for is the characters. The characters are really, really cool. And so I'm hoping that in the third book, the, the plot and the story picks up a lot more and we get like some mm. big things happening, which people have told me that it does. Um, but right now I'm, I'm just loving the characters. I love spending time with the characters. And it's one of those things, like you were saying with King killer, where you could listen to these characters playing checkers and it would be <laughs> awesome because you like the characters and they're so interesting mm. and it's so well-written. Um, mm. and so, yeah, I'm, I'm really enjoying that so far. I'm really excited to do a review for the whole trilogy once I, uh, finish that up. And then I was also reading The Lost War by Justin Lee Anderson. And uh, this is a book that I, I liked a lot. Um, it's an indie uh, self-pub book. And it won, mm -hmm. it won Spiffbo 6 or 7, like the big, um, the yearly kind of um, competition where everybody enters a self-pub book and um, all these like bloggers and reviewers kind of judge them and whatnot. Uh, so it won an award in that, and I just thought it was a really, a really cool book. It's kind of set after this big war has happened and all the dust has settled and this kingdom trying to rebuild, and it follows this guy who is called the King's Envoy, and he basically runs missions and letters and, you know, political kind of stuff for the king. Uh, and he's a mage, which are very much feared in this world. And so it's him kind of dealing with uh, kind of everybody in the kingdom hating him, but yet he's one of the most powerful people in it. And so he's like, I could kill these people anytime I want, but he's like, I'm trying to have like a good, I'm trying to show mm -hmm. people that mages aren't as scary as people think they are. Um, and so, yeah, okay. I, I really enjoyed that book. I think, uh, Gabe, Gabe's going to be, are you're going to be working on it, right? You're going to go back yeah. to it. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm super excited to see what you think of, of the ending Gabe. Cause I think once you get there, you'll yeah. really like it. Uh, but yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much all I've been doing. Um, all right. Other than that, let's, uh, let's get into talking about King's dark tidings. Yeah. Guys. I'm super, I'm super excited okay. to finally do this episode. Cause I, I think that you know, we we tried doing an episode for King's Dark Tidings Five a while back with one of our friends, and about twenty minutes into the episodes, he was like, "Guys, I just got to talk to you. I'm having a really bad week." And it was like, "Oh, okay." So we oh. kind of we like paused the episode and we just like stepped back from it and we 
because you know that's what friends do right yeah. when somebody's mm-hmm. not when someone's not feeling good mm-hmm. you you kind of drop you drop what you planned and and do the other thing and so we we had a really good talk that night i feel like but now mm. it's time to get back to king star <laughs> yeah. five hey uh all right so jk let's uh throw it over to you let's talk about okay. kind of your overall thoughts on the series um how did you fall in love with this series what was your journey like uh like did you did you immediately like the first book or did it take until the second or third to get you hooked so again at this point i was just eating up these fantasy books like hotcakes and i wasn't expecting anything from it hadn't heard anything about it or anything like that just saw the cover and i'm like well it's another one let me eat it up kind of thing (laughs) Uh, my, my sort of criteria was if you've got if you tick the right sort of genre and you're yep. over 10 hours i'll give you a listen yeah anything right. under 10 hours is a bit too short for me. But, oh, okay. um, so in well back then it was now yeah not so much. yeah um so yeah and basically the prologue i was like oh i'm not, I'm not sure about this it's a bit mysterious guy writing the baby whatever da, da, da. Right. after the first from the first chapter I was like, this guy is my fucking guy. Like, yeah. like, yes, dude. Bro, yes. That is what it just, and it, it was weird how it, it wasn't, it took, it just so quick where as soon as I realized what was happening, because you start off when he's like six or seven or whatever, yeah. and he's breaking his leg and you're like, oh, tough life for this guy. And then you pick it up when he's like 12 or whatever, and you're like, oh, my brother's leveled up a bit. That's Good right. for him. Yeah. Good for him. Yeah. And yeah. then at 17, you're like, this guy's an OG, you know? Yeah. This guy's actually an OG. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. And then by the end of, wait, because I think, yeah, the end of the first chapter is when he goes, he kills the strikers, isn't it? And yeah. Yeah. Go up. Yeah. So by the end of that, you're like, well, I don't know what's going on, but I am here for it. Yeah. Yes. And just the yeah. way that he processes the world in his very simplistic way, because all these movies, yeah. he's got crazy things happening, but he's very, you know, yeah, one plus yeah. one equals two to him, and that's kind of it, kind of thing. You know, yeah. didn't have time to bury the body, so I guess I've got to go and find the other striker just in <laughs> yeah. case. The, yeah. You know, I don't, I don't quite know what's going on, but just in case, I'm gonna just do my mission, kind of thing. <laughs> right. So, and then again, the thing which I love most about Kel Cade's writing is the pacing, from especially from the earlier books. Right. I think book three was the toughest sell for me personally, but same, yeah. Books one, and two, the pacing where before you've had time to process what's happened, you're already into another interesting conversation. Where yeah, like, so, right. so after chapter one, where he just killed the 15 strikers, him just interacting with the world was just this madly interesting thing. Because right? like, you know, he's a super, super warrior, super everything, right? Yep, yeah. But then where there's just this whole of, it was interesting seeing how, um, I don't even know how to how to articulate it, guys. Because <laughs> I think at that point, what really got me was how I didn't know where it was going. I didn't know the world. I didn't know anything like that. But I just really loved every, literally everything this guy done, every word he <laughs> yeah. said, every action he took. Yeah. I'm like, yes, bro, yeah. yes, <laughs> yes, right. <laughs> and then even like the way he didn't really know what he was doing. He was like, well, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't really know what my mission is. I'm supposed to be protecting my friends. I don't know what friends are. But um, yeah. I'm a, I'm a just going hunt fast and then it just led to what it was kind of thing. I just thought Kel Cade's writing was really ingenious in the way where she hooked you into the story. Or you sort of fell into the story without even knowing because the characters, the world, everything was so interesting and everything yeah. was just moving yeah. so pacedly. One other thing, I might put this note down. I think I might put it in the notes because there was one plot hole which I've been meaning to share with somebody else who's read yeah, the book. I don't yeah. literally know anyone else who's read the book. But, and I don't know if this is the right time for the plot hole, but no, because it happens it. in chapter yeah, go one. For it, dude. Yeah, go for so it. What do you guys think of the fact, right, that um, because we find out later that um, the orders, the original orders in chapter one, they came from Cadian, right? He, and we think the point of it was he, he ordered the strikers to kill the guy so that to kill Rez so that Rez is out the picture. That was yes. kind yeah. of what was revealed later on, right? Yeah. So then what I don't understand was why 
um the the Shen guy. Well, I can't remember his name. Shen. The guy that oh, the yeah. Shen guy that gave him the final order, his master. Yes. Why did he give him the final order to protect the king if the king was the one that ordered to kill, to have him assassinated or whatever? To me, I don't know, somewhere between, hmm. I think it was after the fifth book, because I think I was just reading it again, again, just prepping for this, and I was just thinking of the interesting things to think about. And I was like, yeah. wait a minute, does that really make sense? But, I mean, <laughs> I'm still here for it. It's a, it's a light yeah. plot hole, which I'll give her a plus for, because sure. again, it leads to the whole... You protect your friends as the rule yep. number one. So but, are are, mm. are you talking about the, the like the initial like where where he's killed the strikers and Master Pater, I think is his name. Master Pater, yeah. Yeah. So, so he's giving... he, he's like dying and like laying mm. there and he gives him those first like the two the rules, final right? two one where he's yeah. like pr protect and honor your friends and then the other one because that's what he says first and then later on in the series we find out that that's actually not what he meant like he was in a kind of a delirium. Like in a weird space, right? But surely what he meant was, was protect and protect honor, honor the king. king. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly. But then that's why what he would meant. he give that order if the if king? Because he must yeah. have known where the order came from. Yeah, Preston right. Preston didn't know, but he must have known that. Well, the orders come from the king. They came from the old king, and now they're coming from the new king. So why, if he has any? Because they seem he that one seemed to have compassion for yeah. Reskin. Yeah, it wasn't like yeah. the other one. For sure. So right. For sure. I would say well. Why give him any orders? Why would he, yeah, yeah, why would he do that if he knew? Yeah, if, you, if, yeah. you know you, if you want to follow your thing and say, well, I'm going to, I've been told to assassinate him, so I'm going to tell the strikers to kill him and leave it at that. And as well, yeah. another thing I'm just thinking about now, why were those two fighting each other? I don't, I don't really That's see. A, that I, yeah, yeah we, I don't. I think I I think that there is more to that whole situation that is going to get <laughs> revealed later because initially I, I had all mm. these questions like, well, wait, we didn't get the answers to this. We didn't get the answers to that. I think that there is way more to that. And that's why it surprised me in the fifth book that Beringish died. Because I would have thought that he would be the answer to like everything that kind of happened. Um, but I, so I think that we'll get the answers as to why they were fighting. My guess is just so that there was no one left to kind of interfere there's no one left to like you know dead men tell no tales right there's there's no one else to get in the way or anything like that so they they knew that they had to kill each other or uh what what you were talking about why would they give him the order to protect the king you know that that's an interesting question because what i i guess it comes down to in the end what is their relationship to kadean because mm. are they are they on board with Kadian or are they not? And I feel I like Kadian wasn't quite he wasn't mad like out there as mad. Not then, at this yeah, point. yeah, yeah. Then, so... But now, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm. And and so I, you know, I wonder, you know, it, it, even though it seems like the one is compassionate towards Reskin and whatnot, I think that they both were very much on the side of the king. Um, mm. and so at even, even to their dying breath, they were like, you know, serve the King or whatever. Uh, but you know, like Gabe said, it just so happened that he was in a bit of a delirium and sent him the other way, which is fortunate for us and fortunate for, uh, Reskin. Um, but yeah, I think, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of weird stuff with that, that I think we'll, we'll have to wait for answers for, cause I, I think there's some pretty crucial information that we're missing there with that still. And what one other point, yeah. whilst we're talking yeah. about summary, because um, uh, as you said something, there was something I wanted to say uh, on Beringish in the sense where I do think there may be more to come from that who the Sen are, what's going on with them and yeah. that kind of thing. Um, because yeah. He was taken out a bit early. But one thing I would say again, and this is um, a credit to Kel Cade and her writing, I really love how she's been able to just slow like not i don't even say slowly because she does it at a mad pace but it's like it yeah. doesn't feel like it's rushed right she right. kind of reveals more and more of the world to us as we go through the book so yeah. it's like in book one it's just about a super warrior in a kingdom literally just trying to get to a tournament or whatever and then right. by the book two you've got all right, it's a whole rebellion he's the true yeah. king all right that's yeah. cool <laughs> by book three suddenly you've got like the ancients and all these other mythical yeah. creatures yeah. now getting involved different kind of magic and you're like okay Okay, the world is a bit more interesting <laughs> than we thought. And then yeah. by book four, 
all because again, book three, it was like setting all of that up, and then I was yeah. saying book four was really resolving. Like, like, yeah. into it and I was a bit mm. going to different before, kingdoms. I was like, and... okay, yeah, yep. the king yeah. becoming an emperor and all of this. Yeah, yeah. Book four, <laughs> when my guy just became the emperor, guys. I was like, <laughs> yeah, yo, dude. right? Really, holy and then this, crap! You know, and then this is the thing when I'm thinking, all right, well. Okay, we've got our, uh, our emperor who's you know he can do his special kind of magic which we don't kind of don't quite understand or whatever. Then you throw in the fact that well he's also some kind of elf and he has a dragon now like <laughs> hell, <laughs> freeze, man. How OG can you make one man? Oh, dude, <laughs> and, like, so well the way said. they end this one, right? Because again, even when even when um well no because you find out what. It hatches. Yeah. Well, no, because when you find out it's a dragon egg, right? right yeah. that moment, yeah. you're like, oh, man, Redskin's <laughs> going to get a fucking dragon. This is going <laughs> to be insane. Oh, my yeah. God, right? Yeah. And then you're sort of seeing where the book goes because it's still just an egg that's blah, blah, blah. And even that the reveal of that, what that was and the role that played and keeping him from his madness and he... Brilliant, masterful, right? Yeah. But then the way she ended it where... We finally get our showdown with KD in round one. Because the whole lead up to that, you're like, well, it can't be the showdown. It's too early right. for the showdown. Yeah. It's, yeah. Come, it's come out of nowhere. We're, we're Weston's supposed to be meeting these guys away. Where did showdown come from, right? Right. So <laughs> we're at the showdown. We're thinking, well, it's the showdown, but it's too early for either of them really to be defeated or whatever. And then obviously our boy Res King gets got, and you're thinking, well, it's a brave man. I, I res- as a because I'm a storyteller with my channel and stuff myself. Yep. Man, you know what? I respect you, Kel. Not many people are brave enough to kill their main character, even if yeah. they're gonna bring him back some way to no, kill him off yeah. and end the book like that. That's a yeah. big, big move kind of thing, right? And I feel like this could be, pe- different people will take this different ways, right? I know that certain people would maybe want to hold off on the reveal that he was coming back a bit longer and leave that a bit more mysterious and mm. things, right? Yeah, but I really appreciated her yeah. revealing it in the prologue that this guy is coming back again, and it's the way she done it in the sense where we'd already had the foreshadowing that well he's been killed a thousand times and that's why his aura's so shattered. He's the shattered yep. one, right? Yeah, and you just don't think about it, right? So when he died, I'm like, oh, he's dead. But then when they brought him back, it was like. Of course he's not dead, he's resting. <laughs> yeah. That's not my duty. He's yeah. done he's like, he's no, here, he's, he's here. It's light work for him kind of thing. And yeah. not only that, right, when he comes back and then the thing hatches and it's like, I can't even imagine how epic this return is going to be for the characters <laughs> in the book. Yeah, so you thought this guy was dead. Diddy You've seen him die. He's up. been dead for days. And now he's going to return from the dead Fucking on a dragon. mother epic. <laughs> yes, dude. Please, man. Yeah. Um, yes. It's please. like it's like nothing else, man. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. You know, like, <laughs> it's it's a different this Reskin to me as a character is on a different tier to anyone else. Yeah. From any other genre. I can't compare it. Like you compare it to someone like Superman or Mad. Reskin's more of the Yeah. Man. Yeah. For real. Saitama, all of them, man. I don't care. So that's my take. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I I, I I think that um if book five because book four kind of ended with Reskin like some people thought he was dead, some people thought he was just asleep or whatever. And so she kind of already ended book four like that. And so for book five, it makes a lot of sense for him to wake up in the epilogue because yeah. I I think a lot of people would have been really pissed if <laughs> She had just ended it like Reskin's <laughs> yeah, dead. I mean, had to just that wait. Way, yeah, like, yeah, no! yeah, yeah. yeah um, no, that, that would have left us but, too sour, man. Yeah. Here, here's an interesting thought, though. Now that Beringish is dead, there's no one left to bring him back if he dies again. Oh. So wait, the Sen, because I remember there being a bit about there's not many Sen left. So, right. so there's right. the Sen, and then there's Sen Goka, and I think the Sen Goka are the ones like Beringish that can actually revive somebody from death, right? I, I believe Pater, so, yeah. Pater, Pater, and then the other guy were both Goka, and they died. And yeah. then Beringish was like the one other Sen Goka that could actually do that. So right, but was yeah. it confirmed that those three were the only three Sen in the land no. at all? No, so no, got, it definitely I'm thinking, wasn't. Well, yeah, it definitely you wasn't. Pull out some more Sen from wherever they're from. Kind probably, of thing. yeah, um, probably. You, that's that's and, true. Yeah, because I like the way she seems to just be pulling. 
different interesting regions out of a backside, like the yeah. Ferrari <laughs> thing, like yeah. Because in fantasy books, right, as a black person, you don't get much representation too yeah. often, right? So yeah. I could, could appreciate. Um, all right, so this is the European vibe. This is the sort of Asian vibe. They're giving it. Oh, but an Africa vibe. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nice. I don't like the lions, but I'm with it. You know. So... <laughs> That's awesome. Um, yeah, no, I nice. really appreciate the world she's building and how full it is. You know. Yeah. Um, it. It really, it really feels like a real world and not mm. only how like diverse it is, but also how all the countries kind of interact. They all very much have their own personality. Like Lon Laresh is one of my favorite things that she's made. I'm like, mm. that is such an interesting idea because it's not just the, oh, it's a country, but women in, are in charge. It's not just that. There's, like, mm. rules to it, it's and there's, huge, like... Yeah. The politics yeah, is there's, different. Yeah, yeah, yeah there's, different like, source. there's really specific ways that make it work, that make it interesting. And so it's not just, oh, this kingdom is ruled by men, this kingdom is ruled by mm. women. There's a lot more depth to it, and I, I mm. really appreciate that. Um, and be before we go on, I want to touch on something you said earlier about how... Uh, when you were initially talking about Reskin, it was like everything he said, you were just kind of glued to to everything he said. And mm -hmm. it's a credit to Kel Cade's writing. I think it's really interesting how she didn't just tell us, oh, this is a really like kind of charming and charismatic character. And that's why everybody follows him. She wrote it in a way where you as the reader are charmed by him you're, you're yeah. with it yeah you know I, like yeah like as the reader you're hanging on every word because I, I feel like in a lot of books like there will be some like kind of roguish thief or something and everybody likes him or he's really charming or whatever and you see him doing that in the book but as the reader you're a little bit detached from that but with mm. this, it's like you're right there and like you want to yeah. hear everything that Reskin has to and say. And the way she writes his thoughts as well. As, yes. It's not just yes. the dialogue in between the people. It's him trying to understand himself and his environment and what's yeah. going on. And the way she gave us such a really clear insight into his perspective of the world and how, how he sees everyone else, you know, and how he sees yeah. things that we would see as impossible. And for him, it's just... You know, taking over the underworld is a night's nice work for our guy. Yeah. You know, <laughs> <Yeah>. so, um, <laughs> and to see sort of mindset, well, well, I'll kill this one so that I don't have to. Oh, I'll kill these lot so that I don't have to kill them later. But he's not cruel. He's just yeah. practical. You know, right. um, yeah, just like just methodical about yeah. just he's methodical. Efficient. He's you know, efficient. yeah, efficient. A degree of ruthlessness, but not cruel. So yeah, right. it's like you know, you can. You can just be like, I get it. You know? Yeah, you can, you can get behind it. <laughs> yeah, like, right. all right, he's doing what he has to do. Yeah, right. You know? Um, I don't know which which sort of topics are for now or for later, because there's one point about this in regards to Frisha. And what one of the oh, really yeah. one of the things that annoy me about annoys me about the book in particular is her character. So like book one, I thought she was pretty cool, pretty interesting. She had her own kind of quirky thing going on. I was like, all right, cool. I liked how her and Rez were on different raves links, but it was kind of working kind of thing. Yeah. But then I think in book two, where... So I thought it was going to be a thing where she was going to teach Reskin about his emotions and how to understand right. his emotions. Yeah. And yeah. Just yeah. Yeah. I would have liked other. that, yeah. You know, and I think, well, that's that's a role she could have done really well and, be, and grown into it and, you know, become a powerful woman in that sense or whatever, right? Yeah, Partner, sure. powerful partner in that sense, right? And I feel like it really, really, really annoyed me the direction that her character went, where it's like, well, this guy, in his own way, does... Because like, to me, it was like, well, he does love her. He just doesn't realise yeah. or understand what love is. Yeah. And it's like, well, in his version of love, because love to me, if you care about this person the most, yeah. whether it's because of your friend, girlfriend, whatever, it's like, well... That to you is your version of love, isn't it? And yeah. the fact that everything that we would classically associate with love, so the fact that he would treat her with respect, the fact that he would give her the world, the fact that he would protect her, the fact that he would honor and respect her, and everything you would want from your loving partner, 
Res King Wood was ready and was already providing in spades, right? Right. So this idea that, well, it was all fake or it was all false or it wasn't real or he doesn't love me or... Yeah. I just thought, Trisha, you are so wet. You are... Get the fuck out of this series, man. This kid is too good for your bitching ass, right? So, <laughs> um, and what's an also annoying is, well, like, well... <laughs> Despite me not liking Trisha, I had faith in Kel Kate. So I'm like, well, maybe yeah. she's going to write her into something else and this yeah. and that. And I just feel like ever since book two, she's just been, no, so book three, where she was kind of taking leading leadership roles in Kyle and all this. I was like, eh, yeah, I mean, but anyone could do that. She's not, right. like, I wouldn't say she's excelled in something where I'm saying, all right, we've seen her go from nothing to something. And right. there's been a working, like with Tyrion. I yeah. think it's the opposite. He was a du- douchebag to begin with, and yeah. now he's grown into a dude I can respect. And yeah. he yeah. becomes the regent of one of Reskin's kingdom or whatever. He's Ooh, like my bro. favorite character. Yep. Yeah, Tyrion. Yeah, he's had some of the best growth in the series. Tam as well has had some really interesting growth from Carpenter yeah. to General of the East, you know? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm with it. So the fact that Frisha, to say she was one of the OG main characters from the beginning, and her trajectory sort of just went yeah. over here, yeah. and where it ended... I- I, agree. I mean, I think she she met Prince Thresson, so I guess she's being used as a plot device to bring him into the story somehow. But we didn't really care about him anyway, so I don't know. So I don't know. So. See, you you know what I would have really liked. Mm. So if she wasn't supposed to be with Reskin, and that was just mm. a plot point that was like, okay, we're ending that. Okay, mm. like I get it. You know, we'll move on. But mm. then there was that other plot point where they go to the. Uh, uh idana row and the idana oh, row yeah. are like we'll train her like we we like they told frisha we'll train you and you can become we'll a powerful a warrior assassin. yeah yes. and and <sighs> then i so i was like oh is is she gonna become like a super assassin and then mm. her and reskin are gonna what once mm. they're more on level playing well, field she learns they might the skills and yeah. the rules maybe yeah. Right. Yes. yeah uh but yeah no and so and then this book, dude, I honestly, like, she is one of those characters where I, I don't even have any theories. Like, I have no idea <laughs> what is going on with her character because now yeah. she's got this clone who's this going back to Kyle. Yeah. yeah, dude, and she's stuck with fucking under KD and Stum. Yeah. Yeah, it's a it's a weird, really weird direction that that whole, her whole line has taken because honest honestly though i i I really wouldn't mind if frisha just kind of quietly went by the wayside (laughs) at some point like i mean i liked her in the first (laughs) like two two or three books but now it's like everybody everybody else has just moved so far past her yeah Yeah, literally everybody pretty much yeah yeah Um, and now i and i i agree with you guys but now i feel like with with the whole the whole golem taking her place and her being stuck with mm -hmm. thress and i feel like that 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 is going to be set up for some major points in the next book. And so like, yeah. I don't think she's going to go anywhere. I think, I think she's going to yeah. stay either good or yeah. bad, whatever it is. She's mm. got, got to stick around just because of the way that Kelcade set all that up. Yeah, for sure. But well, yeah. yeah, she's a big player. I think she'll, she'll be there in the end. And like, hopefully she'll so, change dude. Like she might change, you know, we never yeah. know. She yeah. might. Question for you guys. Just a yeah. quick one. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Assuming Reskin wins in the end, I don't know to what degree or what that means, right? But we'll just assume he wins and defeats Kadian and reclaims his shy, right? Yeah. But by the time he does that, he's already an emperor of a million different nations mm-hmm. at this point, right? So one thing, one thing I was thinking about, which I want to pose to you guys, is where do you think he will take his seat once he's finished conquering the world, if he's alive? Because I feel like he could die at the end. But if he's alive, do you think he's now the king of a shy and sitting in a shy? Or he's the king of Kyle. That's and a good, Kyle. good, really good and question. If wherever you think he's sitting, who do you think is in the Ashai seat? And yeah, well, we don't care about the other seats. It's more just the Kyle seat and the Ashai seat. They're the so, two main seats we care so about. So my my thoughts on that were: I I would mm. think that he would send Tyrion to be the the region of Ashai, king okay. of Ashai, whatever. And then I think he would stay on Kyle. That's just my first opinion. Because I think that I think mm. that he is like he's not really in it for like the ruling, you know. Mm. Like he's just trying to protect his people, and so the the less the less he has to do, the better. And so like he just sent Tyrion off, and that I don't know, just my thoughts. But yeah, yeah it would make more sense. And I think I just remembered 
the city of Kyle or the castle kind of responds to him. Exactly. Primarily, yeah, he's, isn't the, it? he's so, the exactly. Yeah, whatever, sense. Yeah. yeah. So, so here, here's an interesting thought, though. Tyrion was saying that while Reskin is gone, the city does react to him. Oh, it, it, in, in two, place, it yeah, to it, him. Oh, like the okay, it like defa- the, it, yeah, it defaults yeah. to Tyrion because they recognize him as the next in line. So I was thinking, I and I, I don't know what exactly makes me think this, but I have a pretty strong feeling that Reskin is going to die at the end. I, I feel like at the end of the series, he's going to be dead, and there will be something. You know, I'm maybe not, but I feel like there might be no, something I, I where he he does something that the others can't understand, and they're like, Reskin, you've gone too far. Mm. And they kind of like disown it because we've seen it happen in the past with Tam and Frisha. Yeah. Uh, not to mention like a couple other smaller characters that have had their doubts about him. Um, and so I wonder if, you know, he's going to be so ruthless and so methodical that the other like normal human people just can't quite understand and they'll think that he's kind of gone evil or something. He's gone mad. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. What see, you guys... the thing is, no one wants to see that. We don't want to I see know. our hero <laughs> crazy and be hated. I mean, I know. I think it's it's plausible, definitely, that he could die at the end. Um, for real, for real, kind of death. Yeah, yeah. As much as I don't want to see it, I can't see him being the, the situation where he's the hero. They didn't ask for him, but he's the hero they needed, or whatever. The, right. Not the one they deserve, but the one they needed, or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Um, only just because I can't. I, I have more faith in Kel. Than, than to do a sturdy like that. I can't, sure. I can't see yeah. us, especially after seven, eight books, however long it's going to take. Man. Yeah. He's, um, nah, but that's more of the him fair. dying, definitely, I could see that happening in a number of ways uh, for a number of reasons. Do you uh, guys, yeah. do you guys think he's going to go mad? From, I don't. From the magic. I so, don't. I, I, I one, think that he, well, I should say, I, I, I think that, I think that we, we, as we've seen in, in book five, the, the madness is there. When he uses too much power, it's there. But I have a very strong feeling that either the, the dragon is going to oh. help fix that problem or the egg or however that plants out, the dragon will either help kind of bind him to yeah. you know, his own mind or he'll he'll find the way that Gizal was talking about where he's like, because Gizal tells him, he's like, you basically have what you need. You just don't know it yet. Oh. So I think that he'll I think that he'll find whatever it is that Gizal did or who, you know, one one of the other ancients yeah. that kind of figure himself out. So So oh, okay. I was just gonna say with the madness thing, yeah, I would say I think we've seen or we've seen most of that arc play out in the sense where when she introduced it in the third book, I was really bro, what is going on with Reskin? Yeah. Why like to yeah. see him be phased by anything was just unsettling, you know? Yeah. So and I was unsure in, in that book. I didn't know if I liked it or not and all this kind of... And I didn't get it because it wasn't explained or anything yet. Right. Um, in the fourth and fifth, fifth book where you... I can't remember in which books you hear which parts of the explanation. I think we get it in a few different bits about... Yeah. Um, you know, the crystal is helping him soothe because the city right. is using his magic or whatever. Yeah. But I think the way we went through that arc with him where well we saw him go crazy and we didn't understand why and then we realized oh, okay that was the madness that's literally yeah. the madness that everyone's fearing that the elves are worried about and everything that they're there. so we've seen him deal with it and the crystal like you say i, th- I like your theory because i haven't really thought about that but i really like the theory that i think the dragon will help him deal with that once and for all because kind of you um, know the the I Elvenon had mentioned before they're like oh yeah didn't they say like we all used to have dragons but now we don't um mm. and so what if the dragons all along were the thing that were keeping them uh mm. keeping like the human I Elvenon yeah together that that'd be interesting mm. um, well, I'm just interested to see how dragons progress in the story because obviously yeah. in book five we had one and no yeah. we had two we had the baby and then we had and the, the, the mama, big yeah. one yeah. um and then now reskin has his so it's like well will he have the only dragon or will some other dragons pop out and all that kind of because there's that in between you know in the the doorway realm or whatever where you can yeah. just interesting creatures can escape or whatever so it'll be interesting to see what kind of stuff Kelpay pulls out the bag in the next one in regards to like new mythical creatures and stuff yeah yeah 
So something uh, I, I, I want to throw it over to Gabe here in a, in a second, but I just wanted to say there was one thing um, I thought was really cool about this book. And it is the fact that there was such a big gap between the fourth and the fifth book. I was coming into this worried that she wouldn't be able to kind of pick right back. I was worried it wouldn't feel like King's Dark Tidings yeah. after such a long break. That's fair, yeah. Um, but I was I was really, really surprised how when you get right into it, it feels like you're back in King's Just Dark Tidings. Like, it feels, it feels like, like you never left, yeah, man. It, it, oh, dude, it was seamless. It was so mm. good. Uh, the one thing I thought was kind of funny was the, the two brants. And oh, people, yep. people are theorizing that in the fourth book, she accidentally wrote them in two different places and had to come up with a story reason for why there was two of them. Oh, um, oh. yeah, because authors make mistakes. It's, yeah, you know, oh, it yeah. happens. Oh, yeah. And so I, I think it would be funny if like if she just had accidentally wrote them in two different scenes mm. where they weren't supposed to be and then was like, Fuck it. Well, now there's two brands. Let's do it. Yeah, <laughs> I yeah. love that. It's awesome. And, and you know, that makes it make sense because I remember reading that and thinking, oh, well, I don't remember that being a big thing in the last book where we yeah. had two brands and we were focusing on one and focusing on the other and thinking, well, why is there two? So right. for suddenly these two to pop up and then that whole thing to go nowhere. Like at, literally after they said, all right, well, you're free, you're red, you're blue, or whatever it was. We never so, really heard yeah, from that them was again. It. That, that was so it. I'm like, well, yeah. that was really random and odd. I thought maybe they've set a couple, or maybe they're going to be a super tag team later on or something like right. that. But what you're saying kind of makes it make a lot more sense where it's just an author redconning themselves to get out of the jam. Kind of. Right, so, right. And, cool you know, that, that, that brings me to another point. You know, we, mm. we get to see the two brands, and then it doesn't really go anywhere. And I think it's interesting. And this, like... I don't want to say it makes me worry, but it is kind of like, okay, like she's really going to have to like write this in such a way that makes us really care because now the, uh, the character list is getting so big that we cannot fit all of the characters into one book anymore. It, it used to be mm -hmm. where we got mostly Reskin, but a pretty even split among everybody else. We got like a Frisha chapter and we got a Tam mm -hmm. chapter and we got like a Tyrion chapter. Um, but now with the fifth book, there's so many players that this book focused primarily on Reskin. There was not many other chapters that weren't Reskin. Um, yeah. And the elves a bit. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so at the end of this book, I, I was kind of like, well, wait, what's Tyrion doing right now? And what's Brant doing right now? And what's, you know, what, what are some of these other characters back on mm -hmm. Kyle doing? And so I'm really interested to see how she handles that going forward, uh, kind of trying to include all of the characters in one story. And with the fifth book ending the way that it did, I would think that maybe the next book, we actually don't see Reskin a whole lot and we see more of the other characters and we get a chapter every now and then just kind of seeing Reskin doing some plotting and then he'll come back in like a big plot twist like, oh, I was working behind the scenes the whole time, and now here I am. <laughs> um, and so I think that might be what we're in store for in the in the next book, I would think. See, I'm worried because what you're saying makes a lot of sense. And I fear that we're going to spend a lot of time mourning and whining. Like, Because what I like about Redskin, he doesn't whine. He, doesn't, he just no. gets on with yeah. it. You yeah. know? He figures it out, gets on with it. And he's yeah. not dwelling in worry and all these kind of things. So... The fact that they're going to be lamenting that they have to do it themselves and it's all going to fall apart and how can they go on without him and this and that. <laughs> I hope we don't have to sit in that for too long Yeah. before he makes his super duper righteous return. Now, I can you see, know, like you're saying, he's working behind the scenes for a while yeah. before he does that and it just builds it up more. But I'm not looking forward to having to deal with the Frishes and the Tyrions and whilst that bit is going on you know what i i don't think she'll have a sit in that for too long because i would have thought that the beginning of the fifth book would have been like a quarter of the book with reskin still asleep and them really? trying to figure out you know what happened to him i didn't think he was going to wake up in the first chapter that completely took me by surprise and so mm. i i wonder if in the next book it'll be a pretty big time jump 
and they're you know they've had their time of kind of mm. mourning and getting on with that and them kind of going on with their lives and i think the thing that's interesting about king's dark tidings is initially all i wanted was reskin that's the only character pov i wanted mm. but now that the series has gone on there's a lot of characters that i i don't want to say i like them more than reskin but i like them like pretty much just as much mm. as reskin like tiran is probably my favorite character in the series at this point really yeah okay. i i really really like tiran i thought he was a brilliant character arc um but you know so i i really wouldn't mind if in book six we got some of the other side characters if we got some uh you know raylan and jimson and uh tam and frisha and tiran i i wouldn't mind if we got some more of that before we got back to reskin because we know reskin's coming back we know he's going to have a starring role in the future mm. so i wouldn't mind a little bit of a side a side step to see what some of the other characters are doing but it's going to be mm. hard for her to write all of these all of these individual stories into one series going forward just because the the cast has gotten so big well one that's another thing where more than most other authors i would say Carol Cade seems to have a knack for that kind of stuff because especially I felt that in the second book where in the first book it starts off with just Rez and then we pick up Tammy Frisher and then um, we get on the boat and then even like picking up side characters like the Baron and all this kind of stuff so by the end of the first book there's like a million characters on the boat yet yeah. you seem to care about more of them than you would usually in this type of story kind of thing yeah. and then from that's where I thought, well, some of like the railings, the Jimsons, they're going to fall off in the next one kind of thing because they're not, you know, whatever. Right. Um, but then in the next one, everyone kind of levels up and we add more people and characters to the cast. Yeah. To the point at the end where, well, you know, he's got his own mini kingdom squad or whatever <laughs> full of strikers and this and that and Baron. So it's like, and I think the fact that she was able to handle all of those guys without making it feel cluttered and rushed like there was enough time and I don't know how she does it but all the individual relationships so like the Reskin fast relationship the Reskin Wesson relationship yeah the Wesson and his girl yeah. is, I can't remember what her name is but their uh, little thing yeah. like I love how I love how she, she doesn't take a long time to make you care about the dynamics that are in play kind of yeah. thing which is why I feel like I agree, maybe she can't fit every character into the next book necessarily, but I feel like the people like the Jimsons, if we don't get a thing where we're focused on Jimson, I'm sure Jimson will be in the background here and there kind of thing, will be in yeah. the room kind of, you know, that kind of thing. Malcolm's a character I'd like to see come back in the story to some degree, because I was reading the first book again, um, and I forgot how much I liked him. Oh, General he, Markham, yeah. General yeah. Malcolm, yeah, yeah. So, and the fact that, well, I thought he was going to be a bigger character to say, well, he was the general of an army and all this kind of stuff. And then right. since we left the shy, we haven't really seen or heard from him. So, yeah, she has a lot of characters, but um, I do have faith that she will juggle them well. And um, yeah. this is the thing. I think we're going to get even more people. I don't think we've stopped with the people coming <laughs> in yet. I think we still, there's more people, more regions, more creatures. So, yeah. Um, well, yeah, we'll just have to we'll have to see with that one. Yeah, I just hope she doesn't take so long with this next one. Though. I can't wait. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I I think I think she has she has one more book on contract with uh, is it Podium or Penguin or something? Podium, she has I think, yeah. she has one more book on contract with them, and then she's coming back to KDT, and she's like just doing KDT. Is that so, the Fallen series that she does? Fall, yeah, yeah. yeah. Have you guys seen? That's a side thing. Have you guys dabbled in that one at all? I have. I haven't yet, but I but I want to. I, I want to check it out. Yeah. So I read the first one. Okay. okay. It's no, it's no KDT, but okay. Okay. It's okay. You yeah. Know, it's it's yeah. something that will get you, you kill a few hours, kind of thing. So I haven't read the second okay. one. So. Cool. So I would definitely say it's it's not a waste of time. That's for sure. Nice. Um, okay. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. Well, I want to hand it over to Gabe for a second here. We we mentioned Wesson and Salise. 
and that that is something um well i i won't bias you what did what did you think of wesson and Solis in this book um i mean it was it, it was more of, of what i thought was gonna happen yeah you know like like Solis is just this like beautiful young woman that is stuck innocent. in the ways yeah innocent but but it's like drilled you know and, and yeah the, the way that she grew up right like that's like literally metria like exactly exactly yeah literally <laughs> <laughs> um and so yeah i i love that i love the dynamic in the sense of like like wesson is just so like he's just so kind of innocent and nice just as she's innocent but she like she's got this idea that like you know he's mine and and he should be mine he is mine because right. of where i came from like he's mine and wesson's yeah. like I don't even know like i'll just like kind of you know sit down stay over here like blah 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 and she's like come down here he's like whatever and they just keep doing this thing back and forth of like trying to appease each other without being mean you know right so yeah no i i like i like their dynamic and like when when wesson like has to like destroy the ships and kill a bunch of people and yeah he like goes down to his bed and he's crying and she just like grabs him and holds on to him and he doesn't fight it and i'm like that's what that's what this could be like you can yeah that's what it could be listen if you can get out the fucking way (laughs) (laughs) exactly exactly like it's right there right in front of you dude it's right there yeah it's like dude you literally have like the best deal yeah Um, (laughs) but he was so stuck on that dia chick yeah um, Thea. yeah exactly Yep. And oh man, I I really liked that when he went back to his, his hometown, hometown yeah. again, especially after reading Mage of No Renown. Yep. And you you understand like what have you that read that? Count. I haven't. I started oh, it. Oh, I never. Okay. Got I never. Got it. Okay. It's good. We won't, yeah. we won't oh, it's very good. Yeah. yeah we will super spoil good. it. Super good. Yeah, you should definitely yeah. read it for sure um but yeah him him going back to that hometown after everything we see in mage of no renown uh it the the first time i read through uh dragons and demons it it made me tear up a little bit yeah because i was just like like him at the front there and seeing all these people that he had that interaction with in in mage no renown it was so good it was so good yeah and uh and yeah then the whole thing with dia happened and she's she's married and she doesn't hold anything against him and she doesn't she's got know kids. she's got like two kids now. yeah and like she didn't know that he had been sending these letters and you know in in mage no renown we see him sending these letters like every week mm. to to dia um and and we as the reader don't know why she's not responding and so then to get it in kdt5 okay. where where she's like where she's like i didn't know like i i had no idea but mm as the reader you see like how heartfelt these letters are and how much he loves this girl and so that it was such a big impact in that moment when she's like i didn't even see them it's like oh it's heartbreaking um and so for that to all happen and then salise comes up and kind of grabs him by the hand and she's like don't worry we'll just take tonight and be happy and you know everything else and they kind of leave and they they have their night together um, and I really like that. I, I'm like, all right, let's go. They're going to be, I, I'm assuming, a couple from here on out, even though at the end, near the end of the fifth book, he was still like, ah, oh, we're just kind of seeing what happens. Yeah. Like, I, you know, I, I'm That's sure my that- one gripe with Wesson. I do I like, know. I like me some Wesson, but he <laughs> pisses me off with the way he's got a baddie right in front of him. I and know. he's just <laughs> around. Yeah. around. I know. Uh, like, what are you doing, dude? Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, yeah, I'm I'm super excited to see where that goes. But uh, Gabe, what were some of your other favorite things from KDT five? Like, compared to the rest of the series, is there anything that you feel like did you was there anything this did new or better than the previous books? Is there something that makes it stand out? Yeah. So I I wouldn't say. I don't know if I would go as far as to say as it's better than previous books, but I think, I think that the, the introduction of, they're all good. I mean, they're all good, you know? Right. But I think that the, the introduction of the Ialvanon was like super, super awesome. Cause like we've been, yeah. we've been wondering for how, how long, you know, forever yeah. about kind of this, this origin of, of Reskins and where's, why is powers weird and this and that mm-hmm. meeting them and then seeing their entire society and what, where they've been and what they've been doing. I, I just really, I love the entire arc of yeah. you know, him going to the, the fifth Adwin 
um, spending time there and being judged and talking to the the elders and the siècle and stuff was really cool. Yeah. I guess just kind of conclusions too, like finally yeah. seeing KDN, like finally ever seeing KDN. Yeah. Dressin. First time seeing both of them on screen. Yeah, and understanding like how how fucked up KDN is, and like like because we've only heard like KDN's right. a madman, he's done some crazy shit, but this dude's a demon, like he yeah. is possessed by demons, like really bad. I'm glad um, that made more sense in this book because before yeah. it just sounded like generic bad guy. I'm evil yeah, for the sake of right. him or whatever. Whereas here, it's like, well, I'm a power seeking demon wielding. Yeah, yeah, really yeah, bad, so, really bad. Yeah. And so, so that was kind of nice to kind of get just ha have that open up a little bit more and and yeah. see more of what everybody's been talking about in the sense of the, you know, the crazy king of a shy. Yeah. Um. I I really liked and you touched on it there. I I really liked how we got all of the answers to some of the biggest questions that we've been asking for yeah. the past four books mm -hmm. while also leaving some of it Anymore, open yeah. and also posing new questions. And mm -hmm. I, you know, and you touched on this earlier, uh, JK as well, where she has a way of this fast pace of, you know, giving you questions, giving you answers, giving you questions, giving you answers. And it's like, it's just a really, really good pace she sets with this. Mm. And you never feel like, besides maybe the third book, because I, I felt that too yeah. a lot. Uh, <laughs> but be, besides that, you never feel like you're too far out of the loop. You, you feel mm. like you're just behind and that the answer is right around the corner at all times. And I, I really like that feeling because... It, it gives you something, it gives you an answer to something you had just recently, previously, uh, but also gives you something else to think about and be like, well, wait, what about this? And it, it it's just so well done. It's so well mm -hmm. done how she does that. It's awesome. And I like, because you just said that and it reminded me of something which, I mean, this was one of the points I was going to bring up about when we was in that like favorite B character section or favorite characters that aren't Res King kind of section. Because one of my favorite non-main characters, and it's because of the way it kind of dropped, he dropped an answer we didn't even know we were waiting for kind of thing. And it's the, uh, his grandpa King. Was it the King of Gen? Not King of Gendishin. What was his grandpa the King of? And he was just like, ah, oh. my boy. Yes, you, you will be King. Take it, take the crown. Yeah, um, what was that? Who was it? Was it the King of Gendishin? No, it wasn't Genishin. It was it was uh whatever that nation yeah. was. But I, we know what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. I Moldavan. Again, Moldavan. Moldavan. Yeah. yeah. King What's Moldavan. His name? Yeah. And him being Breskin's granddad on his mom's side yeah. or whatever. And yeah. I loved one. I love Moldavan. I just love his whole. Yeah. I'm old man. Ah, I don't give a fuck about being king no more. I yeah, mean, great. I like yeah. you, boy. You got all the right sauce. You know, you can keep the bloodline going. Oh yeah, take the crown, boy. You, <laughs> you know I'm saying? Proud. I love his whole energy and his whole yeah i don't know he's just got a cool kind of old man yeah. whatever kind of vibe about him right um but i like the way again kel k just sort of dropped him and his relationship and the fact that res kin is now the rightful king of this whole other region and so seamlessly you know yeah. it was just a seamless because he went there for whatever reason he was there to what just Get his, his kingdom acknowledged or whatever. Get Kyle yeah. acknowledged, and then yeah, I just take the crown. So I was, ah, yeah, yeah. There, there is a lot of really cool interconnecting relationships, and it makes you wonder like how far in advance she had all this planned because mm. it it does work so believably and so seamlessly. Mm. Um, mm. And by the way, I love that you mentioned Gendishin. I loved at the beginning of the book. Uh, man, there will be no timestamps for this thing. We're just we we don't have a <laughs> we don't have an order to go in here. Um, I I loved how at the beginning of the book, uh, Gendishin comes in and like bows to Reskin, and they're like, you know, we want you to be our king. Like we overthrew the other guy, and we're done with him. We want you to be the king. And so they hand him a contract, and then he goes to like somebody tries to assassinate him, and he he kills him with the the quill. Yeah, and then writes like signs the contract in, in his their blood, blood dude. Like, <laughs> yeah, no! literally. Yeah, one of the baddest scenes I've ever read slash listened to in my yeah. life. Yeah, like, awesome. And he was so casual about it, just dude, stabbing yeah. and signing. So Reskin about it, man. Yeah. Just <laughs> him. That's his. That's all. Oh. 
Yeah. Another another that's day, it, another dude. crown. Where are we, man? That's right. <laughs> that's, dude, that should be a slogan. Another day, another crown. Yeah, that's she, it. She's got to make a shirt. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, man. Hey, man, quick question. Yes. So how did you guys get an interview with Kel Cage? Oh, okay. So, <laughs> so this is a – um. so Spencer handles most of the social media stuff for, like, mm-hmm. our channel. Does a lot of that. Um praise to him he's freaking amazing but he had reached out to her a year year and a half ago wow long mm-hmm. time ago um and then he would wait a couple months and he would reach out again and he would just, oh, he would just, consistent, just, re- just consistent. consistent every yeah. every couple months he would reach out and finally after trying for a year she messages back and says hey i'm so sorry like i never ever look at my dms Mm-hmm. Like, oh, is this I Instagram? Would, uh, no, I think it was Twitter. Twitter. Yeah. Twitter. Oh, okay. Um, and and she's like, I never ever read them, and you know, let's give me a little bit and let's figure something out. And sure enough, a little bit after that, she says, let's let's pull the trigger on it, and we got yeah. it on here. So, wow. yeah. Spencer, Spencer being persistent is what nailed it <laughs> for sure. I was gonna say, I reached out to her on Instagram, and she ignored me. So, I, well, we got a he I got ignored for a year, again. so yeah. <laughs> he got ignored yeah. for like a straight year. I'm yeah, keep at she, it. <laughs> yeah, she was uh she was saying that she um she just doesn't like Yeah, it's I don't think she's ignoring. Yeah, she just like never ever checks it. Like she never yeah. looks. So it's it's yeah. not really like it wasn't on purpose anyways yeah. with us or Okay. Nah, cool. cool. All right, so let's talk about some of these uh one of these character moments and we we were talking about Weston a little bit. And so let's kind of Let's kind of go in on him a little bit because we've we've talked a lot about Reskin. What an absolute giga Chad! What like... the fuck does that mean? Oh, <laughs> uh, you're not online. Gabe. I'm not online. Tell uh, me what that means, though. It's it's just it means that he's like an awesome man. Like he's the best best <laughs> man. I don't know. OG. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. How... All it's... right. Fair enough. Fair enough. It, it's I... like a meme. I don't know how to describe. No, I, it. I got gotcha, you. I got gotcha. you. <laughs> but yeah. So, dude he grows so much in this book and he is uh they they tell him that he needs to in order to be the king's mage he has to be officially recognized as a battle mage or some sort of full mage Mm -hmm. and so um so then he kind of goes from that to little by little just kind of accepting who he is and he has that really great talk with reskin near the end of the book where uh wesson or there's a talk at the beginning of the book too where wesson's like well the only way i can get raised to full mage is if i get raised to a battle mage and reskin's like it's a title like you don't <laughs> like I get over it yeah yeah he's like you yeah. don't ha-, he's like have i ever directly asked you to kill anybody no like you will mm-hmm. still be the same person you are now but you'll have the title, you'll have the recognition. Our agreement still stands. I will never ask you to assassinate anyone for me, uh, mm-hmm. but I do expect you to protect the kingdom if it comes to that. And Weston's like, okay, well, yeah. We've seen him do. He's already yeah. ready to kill oh, yeah. oh, when yeah. his oh, time, yeah, which is why yeah. we respect him. You yeah, know? Right, yeah. And and mm-hmm. then we get then we get that ending bit where um where he he gets raised to full mage and he Reskin comes to his mother's house. Wesson is like, I gotta do something. And he goes upstairs and he comes downstairs in his battle mage robe. Yes. Yes. And the only two things that are said is Reskin looks at Wesson and says, Battle Mage. And he says, Emperor. And it's like, <laughs> what the fuck? It's so good. I love, I love that moment. Cause it's like, it's not like this big thing with a ton of fanfare. It's just, but it's, battle, but, battle but it's, it's monumental though. Yeah. Like, oh like, yeah. You know, even though it's quiet and like maybe seems to par, like that is yeah. like, one of the most momentous moments in this entire series. Yeah. Is dude. him accepting the fact that he's a battle mage. Yeah. Mm. Oh, it's so good. Yeah. I love, I love that scene yeah. so much. Um, mm. Not only so, let's let's just stick stick around with Wesson, man. I okay. I've always been 
just uh, uh, enamored by his power. And and now we we learn, right, that there's – and I'm not going to get into the whole – because you need to read M- Major No Renown. I was going to say, do they get into the whole they do. Him being a yep, demon thing do. more in that? Yeah, yeah exactly. They kind of set up how what happened. But we learned that he is – either living with or part demon or it you know I know something to be. do I think the bit I did read was like his dad is a bit like Naruto or something his dad had <laughs> prisoned so, it in him or you kind of yes something yeah. like you, that you gotta it? you gotta read Major yeah. Nora down and yeah. it, it'll tell you it'll tell you but that that's pretty much it yeah um but then seeing seeing like that because I've always been enamored with his power and the, the amount of devastation he can cause at, yeah. at a whim right um and so, like, the, the times, like, where he has to sink the ships and, you know, he makes his hydrophobic ward on the ship and, like, mm. sinks it. And it's, like, you can always – there's an inner monologue where he's, like, you know, I can feel that – the power just, like, itching to crawl out, mm. right? And especially, like, at the Battle Mage Ac- Academy – or not Battle Mage, the Mage Academy. Yeah. When they mm. were attacked by Beringish and the Battle Mages, like, mm. Beringish used this dark talisman, and he was like, that's a power that I know. Like, that's the power that sits underneath my protections. Oh. Like, trying mm. to come out, and I was like, dude, fucking so badass. Yeah. Kind of scary, but so badass. <laughs> oh, dude. And then him just, like, absolutely devastating just Roan at letting the end there. loose, dude. Just, oh, like, the my God. snap of his finger, dude. Yeah. It's all, it's all it, it takes, said- man. Didn't it say Roan like exploded into particles or yes. something? Like yes. just <laughs> dissolved, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Holy shit, mm. dude. Oh, it's so brutal. Um yeah, what else do we get? We get defeating Roan. We get the bullies apologizing. That's something yep. from Mage No Renown. Cool, yeah. I really like that scene. Uh speaking mm. in front of the whole village. You talked about getting attacked at the Mage Academy. What else do I An- have? Another cool scene, oh. I guess. Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. no, sorry. Go ahead. I... Well, no, I, I was just say when when they're when they make it when Weston makes it to his mom's place, and they're all the rebels come out and they're talking, um, and then like some of the other majors are like, "You're only a journeyman. Like, why would I follow you?" And then his old master Kestrius comes out, yes, and Kestrius says like, "No, you should listen to him. I know what he's capable of. I know yeah. what, he, what he can do." I was like, "Dude, that was so cool." Because like yeah. we haven't heard of a Kestrius in a minute. Yeah, and he just pops up and like, no, like you want to listen to him for sure. That's, like, yeah, that's one of the things I like about Weston as well. I like how his reputation seems to always precede him. With yes. the real, the real people who should yeah. know, yeah. They, yeah. Know. they like, know. Hey, you don't want to mess know. with this one, okay? Yep, you look soft. Know. You don't want to mess with this one. Yeah, yeah. they know. Yeah, mm. and and those people in in Mage of No Renown, you get to see like how how he meets a yeah. and kind really of learns cool, from him man. and then okay reader y- yeah you got to read that next yeah man. for sure next. okay and then, <laughs> i can look forward to it now yeah and, and then reader kessa the the lady he ran into in the fourth book that yeah. was like this like you can't make this guy do anything he doesn't want to do she's also in mage of no renown so you get yeah. to learn what that was about. Oh, so she so these little things that just add extra sauce and extra yeah. depth to it man yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 it's it's a really really good book um but i did like at the beginning of uh the fifth book how you know gendishin bows to reskin and then it's set up for wesson to be removing purifiers yes. from gendishin and teaching the population that magic you know, isn't mm. evil yeah. or whatever. Um, and I cannot wait to see that storyline, dude. That was one of my favorite things from the fourth book was Wesson's relationship with these purifiers yeah. and how, <laughs> you know, they, they were like chained in front of him and he was pleading with them. And he was like, please, like, you have to understand, like, you have the power. Like, you're using you, it now. Yeah, you have mm. the magic. You have to know that it comes mm. from a pure source. Like, you have to know it isn't evil. And they're like, we know no such thing. You're evil. And he's like, I don't want to kill you. Like, yeah. I don't <laughs> yeah. I don't want to hurt you. Like, just accept <laughs> that it's that magic is okay. And so I'm, that was one of my favorite things from yeah. the last book. And so I can't wait to see what he does with the oh, man. virus going For sure. forward. For sure. Gonna I'm not going to lie, guys. I feel, because religious zealots just annoy me in general. Yeah. They're hard, you know, yep. ignorance annoys me. Me too. And I'm a little bit worried as to, I feel like Gendishin is just going to be one of these annoying places where mm-hmm. rather than accepting their rule from whoever it is, puts in charge and just falling in line, 
they're gonna be one of these places that rebel because magic is evil and their religious zealousness oh, yeah, is so for deep sure. And yeah. blah blah blah. Oh so, yeah, what if they rebelled against Reskin? Yeah. Like they well, could, yeah, and, and they, they even, might. Hmm? No, I was just oh. say Reskin even says that he's like the 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 foundings of these purifiers and the people of Genishin are so deep seated. So like you you this is Rome was built in a day. You're not going to be able mm. to do this. Like it's yeah. going to take a long time and a lot of hard mm. work to try and convince these people that what you're doing is you know magic is okay. Right. So I, I think I think rebellion is a total that is that's probably going to happen. I would yeah. think. Yeah. 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 I'm not going to lie, and this is maybe the the darker part of me. I feel like, and I think it's because again I'm not a fan of religious zealots, and especially yeah. in a world where. I can't help but feel that that kind of attitude would get your nation wiped off the map. Yeah. So you're the one nation in a world full of magic users that isn't yeah. trying to use, and you're not only trying to stay out, you're demonizing them, right? calling yeah. them scum of the earth or whatever. How are you even still in existence right now? You're lucky right. one of these guys haven't just decided to come and wipe you off the map because right. they feel like it, you know? Yeah, so, sure. I do feel like. It wouldn't be the worst thing if, uh, yeah, there was a bit of a rebellion or something in Genishin, and, and they just that's wiped where them out. the religious <laughs> just got wiped out. Yeah. You know, if you're with them, you're fighting to the death, and you die, and everyone that's left over is a bit more open-minded to the new regime. Let's say. Yeah, I, yeah. you know, so, I, I think we're gonna see a lot more battles that are not necessarily Rezkin versus Ashai. Mm. I, I think we're gonna see some of these bigger battles. Some of these countries are gonna come into play and have you know, conflicting opinions because he's the emperor over everybody, but they're all very different countries. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so there's going to be some like, you know, we don't agree on this at some point. Um, so I'm, I'm really excited to see some of those big battles. And we got to see our, I think really our first example of a big battle in, mm -hmm. in this book. Uh, because before it was kind of Rezkin doing his like sneaky thing and like assassinating yeah. people and Skirmishes, stuff. Skirmishes, yeah. Yeah. And now it's like, okay, this is a large scale battle. And they they describe all of the monsters that are like walking through the battlefield and, and all this stuff. I'm like, dude, I am ready for this. I am ready for like big armies and dragons to sweep out of the sky and obliterate whole troops. Like <laughs> I am I am ready for it. Um, but I do want to talk about Tam. Uh Ooh, this yeah. This is a storyline that I, I really enjoyed this book because in the last book, dude, I, I cannot tell you the amount of anxiety I experienced <laughs> when Tam got uh, taken yeah. and then escaped and taken again. Mm. And I was just like, no. Don't play with my emotions like this. I know. <laughs> yeah. I can't I know. It, oh, oh, my God. God. And so oh, to, to see him not only like doing pretty well in this quarry that he's trapped in but also organizing his own rebellion and by the time Reskin shows up like he doesn't even really need to do much like tam tam has the fey he has this rebellion and they they make it out of there and Reskin's just kind of like killing whoever gets too close to tam and i i really enjoyed that what do you guys think of tam's kind of growth and the eventual sword bearing he gets knighted. Oh, dude, that was oh, that was awesome. It's exactly what it needed at the at the end of that whole entire little arc. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I think so. I I like to think about it. So so Tam Tam had this hole in his mind, right? Yeah. It forced him to to intake knowledge and stimuli and all that stuff at a rate that humans shouldn't really handle. Right. And so I think from. You know, from that happening, he gets captured and he gets taken to this this quarry with Ute. I think seeing seeing like because because there's moments like where you notice that like he's doing stuff because like that hole in his brain made him capable of doing that. You right. Know? Oh yeah. For so, sure. Like massive points of learning and language and this and that. Um, and then also kind of seeing like a little bit of like kind of a crazy streak too. Like mm -hmm. like he kind of went a little crazy, mind you. Like he wasn't totally crazy. The rocks were talking to him and stuff. Right. But it was in it's interesting to to see from like Ute's perspective, where it's like, you know, like you're talking about rocks. Yeah. Talking to you, like this is pretty wild. 
how um, how satisfying was that when Reskin finally shows up? Yes, and he's dude, like, was, this, fulfilled. "This is the yeah. emperor. This is yeah, the guy." It fulfilled all my worries <laughs> about that whole thing. I was just yeah. purely satisfied. <laughs> yeah, pure satisfaction. Uh, yes. <laughs> Mm, yeah. so good and by the way i love ute he's like i Me think too. ute's awesome yeah. dude he's gonna mm. become one of my new favorite characters yeah. i think well he's... i mean he's gonna be he's gonna be like if tam's a general then he ute's like his first advisor dude right i'm, gonna say, gonna be right I'm looking forward to see those r- ragtag stragglers who we saw by the lake yeah in the yeah yeah see how them guys level up into captains and you know yeah young kind of leaders of their battalions or whatever exactly. um, yeah Think that will be really interesting to see so yes yeah yeah that whole breakout scene the t- the sword buried i think i shed a tear when um yeah when you got the for sword. sure yeah um, dude for sure so well and even yeah, and well even done. tam and tam like so severely doubting himself yeah like that's i think that's what got to me the most was he he was so doubtful and reskin was just like was just there he's like do you do you not see what you've done yeah you have you have literally done this by yourself without any input like you are you are it you're the person that can do this and he yeah. finally realizes it and accepts the position i was like yes dude, would be so yeah. awesome <laughs> and i i yeah. I'm, I'm really excited to see where the relationship between like tam and uthe goes because they're like obviously like kind of best friends yeah. now and i think it's really cool how she set this up they are physically chained together like this yep. far apart for six months or however yeah. long it had been if not longer they've been chained together for so long and then it res can like breaks that chain and then you see later on by the uh by the river or whatever they're like still standing really close to each yeah. other and i'm like mm. okay this is gonna be cool like i bet yep. this is gonna be like a really good friendship like they've obviously bonded over this time they yeah. feel like a a team yeah, yeah. they feel like a team brothers, yeah. They're brothers yeah, yeah. yeah. brothers yeah and so i i really i really like that and i really hope that we get uh more of it i doubt we'll get like a dedicated uthe chapter or anything but but we'll see more I, of him yeah i think yeah. he's gonna be a great side character i really like him a lot yeah seeing him as part of tam's council whatever that becomes yes be yes quite yeah quite nice where do you think did it did he say where he's sending tam because i know he's sending him to the east is it to gendishin or somewhere in particular or we don't really know what's happening with tam i i think I, I think it is gendishin because yeah. he uh that's where he sent baron nask and yeah. he's sending tam with baron nask to be the general of nask's army or right whatever. yeah yeah so I, I'm Ooh. pretty sure he's headed to Gendishin. Let's uh let's talk about Farson a little bit. Oh, talk, yeah. talk about talk about <clears throat> character growth, man. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Every every time I uh every time I think of Farson, I think of Joel from The Last of Us. Because um, <laughs> yeah. they're they're like the same character. Yeah. But um yeah, so finally at the end here, we get this uh when Rezkin dies. Oh boy. This is when I, yeah, this is when I probably cried. Oh yeah, same, for sure. This is like really, really impactful when he finally just admits it to himself and he's crying. It's like, my boy, my boy. Yeah. I was like, oh Oh, my God. God. Somebody, somebody save him. Someone save the emperor. Somebody save my boy. Oh dude, it's so good. So good. I love that moment. (laughs) So I'm going to put a spanner in the work because I <laughs> Go do for it. like that moment, right? Yeah. And I think, and I like their relationship overall. Like, I thought it, from the get go, it was interesting. I do have a pet peeve with Fuss. Yeah, right? yeah. Go In for it. In the sense where, so one thing that never quite made sense to me about his character is how he's basically the only person left that in a sense actually knows who Reskin is because he was yeah. there his whole life. Yeah, right. right. And it's like, well, he treats Reskin like Reskin is some kind of demon, at least for the first period of their relationship. And even then, he's got this begrudging, you're still a demon, but whatever, kind of a- attitude yep. towards it. Right. And it's like, well, he of all people should be very aware that although this guy has demon level capabilities, he's as neutral as a human could be. Like, he... yeah. Like he he of all people should know that although he's a killer, 
he's not cruel, right? Because he has yeah. no reason to be cruel. He's never been cruel. He wasn't raised to be cruel. It's not yeah. part of his yep. skills or training or anything, right? Right. And then on top of that, he is a striker. So he's also a, a super killer going out, doing super assassin, all this kind of stuff, but doesn't see, you know, he sees himself as a soldier or doing his duty or whatever. So the fact that he should have that strike, you know, the same way the other yeah. strikers give him a give him just the pass or whatever. The fact that he couldn't really give him the pass from the jump kind of annoyed me because it's like, well, mm. once you realize he's not out to get you, and the only reason he was out to get you because he was following the rules like any good soldier, and even the reason he didn't kill you was because of his own morality, not because of some external order or anything like that. It was him deciding himself that he didn't feel like killing you. Yeah. Like fulfilling yeah. the order kind of thing. I felt like, well, that in itself should have said, all right, well, as ruthless and, you know, unhinged as this creature might be, <laughs> I don't know. So, There's no reason to hate him. No yeah. Reason to just yeah. Hate him, you know? So, so, so here's the okay. thing. Here's the thing. I, I think I have an answer for that. So, the interesting thing about that relationship is. Farson was there for the whole time so he knows how they trained him and they know or Farson knows that they trained him to be this absolute killing machine without remorse basically a uh, a weapon he's a machine he's he a robot of sorts more than right. anything else yeah yeah and so not only does he know that but he also knows that Reskin I, I think that for the first like three and a half or maybe four books, he did not completely trust that Reskin was telling him the truth about the rules being changed for him because he knows that Reskin is a better uh, master of manipulation and deceit than even he is. And so he's like, this could very well be a very long play by Reskin. This very, like, it is very possible that this whole thing is a complete ruse. And so he's having to watch every step and be very, very careful with Reskin because even though he does deep down have those feelings, like he feels like this is something like a son or a nephew or something to mm. him, he can't completely trust it. He can't completely trust in, in his emotions or his heart in that one because he knows that day and night, every single second of every single day, it was drilled into this young boy to be as manipulative and deceitful as possible. And he is the best at it. And so I feel like there's a lot of distrust with Farson being like, I want to believe. I really, like deep down, I want to believe that he's doing right by the kingdom and he's trying to do the right thing. He's like, but if I let my guard down for a second, that means my death and my uh, niece is she's his niece, niece. right? Yeah, yeah, and so and, niece and my better. right and and my niece's death. So if if he allows himself to give in to those kind of familial like feelings that he has for Reskin, it could mean the death of his real family. And so I think that was kind of the tug of war for a long time just like that whole I want to believe thing, but he just couldn't quite allow himself to do so. Well, and and, and there's, there's a scene too that I, I don't remember where this is or even what was really said, but basically Farson comes to Reskin and says like, this isn't how I thought you were going to be. Right. This isn't how I mm -hmm. thought that we made you. And then Reskin snaps and says, this is exactly how you thought I was going to be made. This is exactly how you guys made me. And yeah. I, again, I don't remember the context and I wish I could because it was a lot more momentous than, than I'm putting it. Yeah, yeah, but that it just mm. goes to show exactly what you're saying. Like, there's kind of a dissidence between mm. uh, the the way that Farson looks at him and thinks how he should be and how Reskin was created. If that yeah. makes any sense. Yeah, definitely. Mm. And and meanwhile, Reskin is thinking he's not happy with me because I'm not like he he perceives me as not following the rules to some yeah. extent, and he doesn't mm. realize that Farson is deeply regretting creating yes yeah this and killing just machine. Sor sorrowful just yeah. like wish yeah mm -hmm. yeah and the, you know there's a couple moments where reskin's like i'm doing everything you asked me to do yeah i'm yep. like <laughs> that's oh, what hurts me the most yeah, oh, yeah. reskin is trying so hard yes <laughs> and these guys still don't trust him or did oh yeah but no yeah. i hear what you're saying and i think you defend fast and well so okay yeah. fair play.
<laughs> uh, let's talk about Entress and Azaria. What did you guys Ooh. think of the addition of the elves? I I personally loved it. It was probably one of my favorite arcs of this whole entire book. Was yeah, was meeting them and and kind of seeing again how they Isle non work and what they're about, and then the whole entire kind of like love thing between reskin and azaria azaria yeah it was just really wild the the whole the whole dreams thing like before they even met was like really captivating to me yeah because it just like it sets up such like a cool kind of like sidebar to the story that they're telling where there's yeah. there's always this other thing looming right like there's just always other thing that's in within their heads both reskin and azaria's heads yeah um so yeah i, I just i really enjoyed that and um i'm glad that I'm glad that they kind of like started to somewhat feel Head out that what way, was going yeah. on. Yeah, yeah, for sure. What did you think, J.K.? Um, no, nah, I really liked them. I was shocked when they handled Reskin because it was. I think it was probably the first <laughs> yeah, time in the yeah. series yeah. when you've seen anybody that, and that was it. And he handle even says it. He, like he's like, this is the first time that I like I knew that I would lose. I would lose this battle. <laughs> yeah. It was like, yo, these elves are serious. Yeah, yo, dude. Um, yeah. So. Uh, yeah, from that moment, I was like, all right, well, I like that they're real players. I liked that we finally had, because once Frisha was out of the picture, I'm like, all right, well, who is going to be the queen yeah. of this empire or yeah. whatever? So I'm, I'm glad we've got sort of a, a worthy, because I thought for a while it would be Mage Thorell or someone like that. But, yeah, um, same. I'm glad, I think um, the woman's name, I can't remember oh, her name. Oh, Azaria? Azaria. Azaria. Yeah. yeah, I feel like she's a she would make a good warrior queen for, yeah. for the yeah. Kylie Room Empire and things. I feel like I would have liked. I remember. I can't remember the details now, but I remember while I was going through the L section, it would have been nice to see their general culture a bit more. Is what I was thinking. So yeah, yeah. you know, not everyone is a part of the army or Sierra Clear or whatever. Yeah. Them, you know, just to see the baker or whatever, just to right. see yeah. all of the, yeah, yeah. the normal regular, people, yeah. normal yeah. in how elf culture is just as a casual thing. Right. Um, I think would have been nice, but it's not really a critique. It's more of an extra, sure, extra yeah. thing I would have liked to have seen. So I, I liked everything that was going on there. Um, understanding Reskin's powers a lot more and him sort of get, just getting a bit more depth into that side of yeah. the magic kind of, because he's using it to like make mobile phones and stuff, but no one can yeah. understand. <laughs> yeah. I love how different so many of the, like the elves in their age and the mindset that comes with that you know the yeah. comparison of how they pity us for our short lives and we kind of not pity them but like we yeah. have our yep. own style or whatever you know? Yeah. Right. you know so nah man I thought it was all really just fascinating just all of it was really and I like even the side characters who was hitting that other guy who was like half human no he was an elf who was raised by raised humans, by humans I think. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah the one that was oh, all hot he... on, on Thrill yeah yeah, yeah. I love Kel Cade's just, they're not even B characters. They're like C characters. Right, and even yeah. them are really just fun and interesting. Really yeah. good. Yeah. they're there, you know? So, um, well, I think, nah, it's, I think it's interesting. You know, you, you touched on it a little bit there, how, you know, for the first time, really, we're seeing somebody who can throttle Reskin, right? Mm. And it, it's interesting because just when you get to the point where, you know, I, I've never personally felt this, but I've seen a lot of other people kind of say this in the, you know, Reddit and whatnot, that Reskin, like, it gets boring if he can just defeat everyone. Like, if yeah. he, like if he's just the best at everything, then it becomes where's a little... Where's the challenge? Yeah, yeah, where's the challenge? And every time we get to that point, there's some political intrigue that gets thrown in the works, or there's some social situation or there's some like really big enemy that they all have to face like in uh, book four, mm. but then we get to book five and it's interesting seeing Reskin well out of his depth. We're seeing him yeah, as he's the weakest. Yeah, a, yeah. As he should be at his age. Yep. And mm. so, um, you know, he's, he's training with these Ielvenon and they're like, Oh no, use the, use the staff like this and follow these moves and I'll teach you how to go faster. And it's like, whoa, somebody's teaching Reskin something? That's crazy. Yeah. yeah. And so it was cool just to see like everything kind of expand. And like, even though he's leveled up so much and everyone around him is leveled up so much, he gets thrown into this new situation where it's like, 
he's he's the bottom rung you know he's yes. you know he's not like the strongest there uh yeah. and then you throw dragons into the mix and it's like okay mm. now he has to learn how to fight a dragon yeah. um, <laughs> but the one thing i really didn't like too much about the uh the elven section was you know throughout the last um i guess since book three because they weren't really mentioned before then i don't think but since book three it kind of gets said like the elves disappeared like nobody knows where they are nobody's ever seen them they've been gone for you know thousands of years or whatever mm. and so you feel like they all died or like they all went to like another planet another realm or yeah, something another yeah. realm. and turns out they're in the woods by the mountains yep and i was kind of yeah. like i was like what the fuck and then the uh the guy that you were talking about the guy that was raised by humans that guy even mentioned he's like oh yeah the humans don't like us because you know we have pointed ears and we scare them or whatever yeah. and he's like but my family really liked me they raised me like a human and then i went back to the elven city it's like wait so people know that there's people elves know. Out, yeah. out there and that that was just kind of weird to me i was like that seems I mean, maybe not like a plot hole, like maybe just it's this one community of humans that like knows about the elves and they just kind of keep it secret. But I, I don't know. It, it made them out to be like this very mysterious race that lives in like another realm and, and all this stuff. Um, and then turns out they're just out in the woods somewhere. I was like, all right. Yeah. Well, you know, just to touch on that then, because I think... Maybe Kel got a pass for me on that because when they went there, they went through the doorway, didn't they? Or they went through yeah. the doorway and then walked the rest or whatever. And I yeah. think in my head, because what you've just said creates a plot hole that I hadn't seen. Because from how I was thinking, I was like, well, this place must be so hard to access and get in and out. You must need the doorways to do it kind of thing. And the humans right. lost access to the doorways. But then right. what you just said about Matey who lived with the humans and then just decided to go and go back yeah, home but, with the elves. Yeah. How he knew it was there and found it and all this kind of stuff. Maybe it's not so mysterious. I thought maybe it's beyond some super right. hard mountain range to climb over or whatever, you know, yeah, um, or something like that, um, and or the forest beyond there. But to say, maybe he just left his human family and just went went there casually as a kid. You can't be. I don't know. Maybe I don't know. We'll see. I don't know with that one. That's a yeah. yeah. You you raise an interesting point there. But it's not the worst thing. It's not the the biggest deal. Um, yeah not even the hardest thing to rewrite again if you like. yeah for sure there, there's ways that she can fix it yeah. and kind of kind of make it and make it work and all that but yes yeah, so let's uh let's move on to talk about i don't know i don't i don't have much to say about raylan and jimson other than i'm so glad <laughs> that they finally got together yeah for the longest time i was like just get together guy come on like just do it and then in the fourth book they completely disappeared and i was like oh i really hope that uh i really hope jimson comes back and so i was really glad <laughs> to, to see them for a bit um and then prince thresen holy crap yeah. we get prince thresen in this book what what does this do for the rest of the series what kind of wrench does this throw in the plans of reskin and everyone in kyle I don't I don't think that it throws a wrench in anything. Uh, I think that it just goes to show more of the insanity that Kidian is is exhibiting. Hmm. Right? Cuz like cuz when when first she gets captured, she gets put away in the dungeon and Thresen's there. Like it, it it was a shock, but it like it made sense to me that like okay, Kidian's holding on to these pawns. They're yeah. they're just cards in his in his deck and he's going to try and use them at some point in some way in any fashion that would benefit him, you know, to win the war or whatever, to destroy a shy, whatever he wants. Yeah. Um, and oh. so, like, he'll definitely get used as a fucking pawn at some point. Anyway, yeah. He's going to use Fisher as a pawn to blackmail Reskin. Yes, even thought exactly. About that. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, once once Reskin, like, oh. finally figures out, which he will, he will figure out figure that out. the Frisha that's there is not the real Frisha. That's when that shit will come, come to pass right there. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. How that, <laughs> yeah. how that, oh, man. And, oh, man. And he's even told Frisha in the past... Um, I think it was when she wanted to go to Lon Laresh 
and she snuck aboard the ship and she's like, I'll be fine. Like, I want to go along with you. And he's like, if you come, you need to know that if they capture you, I will kill every motherfucker in my yep. way. Yeah, to get, you, get back. you back. Yeah. He's like, and that's on you. Yep. And so, <laughs> like, I can only imagine what hell he is going to oh, unleash. Yeah. Once he finds out. Dude. Oh, dude. Yeah. It's going to be so good. So good. Side so, question, just whilst yep. I remember, because um, yeah. I don't know why it pops up. But do you remember from the first book, he took, he had those, the, the three small men or whatever that he took to the Adona row and said, train them, give them the skills or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Like, do you like, think like, they will come back the, in some yeah. regard? Yeah. Yeah. Then, then, do you think they will come back in some regard at some point and yeah. help the cause I in some do. way? For yeah. Sure. I hope so. Because I really liked them and that. And I feel like, I don't know if she's forgotten about them, but yeah. I mean, I, they, they only need some time to learn the skills, but yeah. yeah. So I think I think that when so when Ruskin went to to Pruar and he he basically like said like listen like I've got all your parabata leaves I've got factories mm. full that's of right these ink leaves and so I think when that when that starts to play out and they start either shipping them back or trying to like get them or whatever I think that's probably when we'll see his like little recruits that he had maybe come into play and might save a shipment or whatever you know whatever yeah. might happen but I think that that's mm. so that the whole like the whole dark side of the force thing, like when we start seeing the Raven in action, the trying, Raven. Trying, yeah. yeah, trying to fix, you know, make sure that this stuff gets moved and this happens, is when we'll start to see kind of that side of the the yeah. either the Adana row or or whatever it mm. is. Here, here's a question: Now mm -hmm. that he is free from being uh the emperor for at least for a time, yeah, do we see Rez can go full Raven? Well, that's one thing I wanted to mention is I like the fact that. The Raven. I feel like in the fourth, third, and fourth book, we really didn't see too much of yeah. the Raven. You know, we, like that character got put on shelf for a little. I mean, he went to the Adonis Road, didn't he? Or, and and was we, that the third book. We we got him in the third book when he was taking down when he was getting Prince or the Princess back. Uh, Illinette, and, yeah, yeah Illinette, and he was. Oh he was, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the the whorehouse. He was setting them up, and yeah. he did his Raven stuff. But then the fourth book, we get like almost yeah, done, right? No yeah. Raven, yeah. no Raven. Okay. So it was nice to get a bit of Raven back in this book, where he was, because at the end, in it, that was Raven stuff, where he was basically took on the army. With Zarya. Yeah, yeah. When they went to Gage, yeah. and and he went in yeah. there, and he was talking to the governor and stuff. Yeah, he was all Raven there. Even though I ain't gonna lie. That was the first time I was like, I don't know if that's how the Raven would handle this. Like, <laughs> well, I mean, I know it, that was just felt a bit nice for the Raven. Yeah. I'm going to take on a whole army because I want to be, because I don't mind you, as opposed to just doing the most efficient thing. Well, so which... do, do, you oh, remember, yeah. do you remember the mm. scene when he, when he's in the, the governor's house or whoever it is, mm. and, and like his wife is about to kill him? And he and he grabs this. He's like interrogating both of them. He grabs his fire poker and he has his inner monologue. <laughs> yeah. Like, do I do I act like the Raven? Or do mm. I act like what was the other? Was it just the emperor? Reskin. I think, I think was it the, or just the Reskin? Raven, the Reskin, Reskin, and the Emperor, so, right? Yeah, the, the three of them. He he's has trying this, to like, decide. Monologue, and he's uh, which was really cool. That was like a that was a big step in his like like moral efficiency because like before mm. like I, I don't think with the emotions that he's had like he he would have he would have done what he had to like he would have yeah tortured them both to get the information but he's like do I really want to be like that like do I need yeah. to be that person right now. And he chose the lesser path, which still worked out great. Yeah. Um, but it's just one of those because, like in book one, like he would have not have hesitated to right to kill those people. Yeah, book one, them. Raven, man, he ain't got yeah, time book for one that. Raven. <laughs> yeah, exactly, dude. Uh, yeah. So I'm I'm wondering if we get a lot more, a lot more Raven yeah, in the next I hope so. book be sweet. Um, when he's kind of cut loose from the the need to be the bonds of being an emperor. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Mm. As as we go along here, I, I got some quotes I just want to run through real quick. We, we've already talked about most of them, but I have, I have yep. a couple here. Um, so there's one where Reskin uh, shows up in the caverns with Tam mm -hmm. and somebody says like, who's that? Or, or is that your, em that's not your emperor or something. And Tam is all like crazy in his head still. And he's like, can't you see he's in disguise? Tam said in this drawn out <laughs> stage whisper as if it was a secret between him and everyone gathered <laughs> all around them. <laughs> nice. 
Yeah, I thought that was really that's funny. Sam with a hole in his head. <laughs> Love mm. it. And then we have a we have a great Wesson moment where um, what's his name? Peyton Peyton DeVos. Uh, what's her name's dad? Raylan's dad, the rebel. Peyton. Um, is it Peyton? He, yeah. Okay. And he says, "If not for Wraith, I'd have killed you before we before you knew we were coming." And then Wesson just has this baller ass moment, and he says. You'd have failed and died for trying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. Oh, Wesson has come on, Wesson, come on. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is such a good quote, dude. It is mm. so perfectly balanced. Like, you would have failed and died for trying. Yep. Like, that is so good. Then he straight. says, now that sounds more like a battle mage. Yeah. Yes. Mm, yes. Um, yeah. <laughs> and then we get a we get a funny moment, or at least I found it funny when Reskin overhears the. Uh, they're like traitors. They're going to go to the other side. Yep. And so Reskin kills them right before the big battle. And then as he's walking away, he just kind of stumbles upon Farson, and he just says, "Farson." I need you to take care of some bodies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. I, I thought that was funny. I think that's it. I don't know why I have this note under quotes, but let's talk about some of our, our favorite moat or favorite Jesus. Favorite moats, baby. Come favorite on, favorite moats. <laughs> our, favorite moats. Our favorite moments. Uh, and I, I have this list here. Do you guys see anything that you would like to talk about? Um, it's not a very long list for this one. Yeah, There's one forward. off the jump that always stands out to me. Let me try and get the thing up. I think it's the fourth book where that's the one where he, he he's got the flaming sword. The, uh, basically, yeah. I'm talking about the flaming sword. Of irie. sword yeah. The sword yeah. of Irie yeah. moment, yeah. right? Yes. Because I like how he sort of figures it out in the moment and sort of fulfills yeah. the prophecy in the moment for the sake of just getting it done like he's not trying yeah. to be yeah. this prophetic kind yeah. of guy it's just like no he's just trying maybe to get if they out see of there the prophecy fulfilled, yeah it'll stop the drama and i can get out of here you know right. like, that's yeah. his mindset while yeah. they're this thousand year ain't just because of some skills he casually picked up from before or whatever <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, dude. maybe i could call them oh, the fire <laughs> track homies are cool with me as well all right cool and i'm just like <laughs> so so this true, guy dude. is so just true. on another level yeah. man that was definitely <laughs> one of my nuts, dude so i think that, that was his, uh, that his second crown i don't was that the third one or the second one i don't think they crowned him as the emperor yet or had they i don't know no. man. but i think that was like when you're thinking oh this guy is he's more than a king he's something else yeah, man. And they yeah. Didn't something else for this guy. For sure. yeah for sure uh, all right, I got I got one here too. Yeah, go for it. There, there's kind of two moments that that compound into this. But when, so shortly after, uh, Reskin and uh, Mage Thre- Thress, not Thress, Threl, and Threl, Threl. Um, mm-hmm. and then the two Avanon have to fight the dragon. Yeah. Um, and mm. then Entris gets wounded on his back, right? Like like oh, scratched yeah. down his back. Oh yeah. Um, oh yeah. And the woman elf. Azaria. Azaria, thank you. Azaria is like, fix him, heal him right now. Like you are you are spiritual. You can heal him. And he's like, How do I do it? What do I do? Like, tell me what I need to do. And then and then she goes on to say, like, you know, you need compassion. And and Reskin just like like comes into himself that. and he thinks he's like, I, I can't, I can't help him. I, yeah. I do not, I do not have the capability of feeling that emotion. I can't do that for him. So that was kind of a bummer. But then when Reskin makes his way to Tam. Yeah, he finds Tam, and Tam is like, "I need your help. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna die. Like, I'm gonna yeah. die really soon." Without hesitation, Reskin grabs him and fixes him with all the compassion that he has. Which, mind you, is not a lot, but it's enough to fix his best friend. I was like, Dude, "Yeah, that's it. That's growth right there." First yeah. of all, it's 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 growth like on such a level for Reskin that it's like almost like unbelievable. Yeah, judging by how he's been and the way that he's built, right? Yeah. So it's like one of those mm. things where you're just like. You know, this is like a uh, momentous moment with how his his like his love for his friends like has grown. And yeah. His, his understanding of like like who he wants around and who he knows is like close to mm. him. And yeah, that was yeah. that was just a big a big moment for me. Yeah, for sure. That that definitely made me tear up a little yeah. bit. It was just him him healing Tam, and it it described the kind of 
compassion he has for him in and the way needed, that like and, and then in depth i mean it showed him like the entire thing like he was grabbing this like this strand of orange power and this strand of yellow and this yeah. green to shove right here and like just this yeah. massive like network of power that he needed to use to like weave healing into tam i was like that's yeah. really cool dude yeah mm. that, that yeah. was really good and it, it talked about his like um his regret for allowing this to happen. Yes. To and the guilt, friend. the guilt yeah. that was built on it. Yeah. 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 That was great. Question guys. Yep. yep. On the topic of Reskin's emotions. So do you subscribe to the idea that Reskin never had emotions and slowly learned to have emotions or he always had emotions and he's only now beginning to understand his emotions. So yeah, I, I would I'm gonna go along that line. I think that he's I think that he's always had emotions, but I think he was trained and groomed to absolutely just set aside them. He I think he felt them, but then his brain subconsciously immediately subverted them to somewhere that they don't need to be. Yeah. But but I think that after leaving the the fort and, and meeting people and like having to do things, I think that the those subversions that were there in place by the teachers, like almost like a law, were kind of starting to be broken and all of a sudden eroded. like he has yeah, eroded, right? They're kind of dissolving a little bit mm. and they'll have a little bit of emotion here, a little bit there. But I th I think he's always had them. I just think that he's been trained to like absolutely genuinely ignore them to the point yeah. where he he doesn't even know that he's doing it. They're just right. they're just gone. And you know what? Because I agree, and it's another. I ain't gonna try and bring up Frisher again, but it's not another <laughs> yeah. reason why it yeah. annoys me, Frisher. Because one thing I noticed from the beginning, like as soon as he leaves the fort, like we see him having the pangs in his chest that he just yes. doesn't understand. Yeah, like, so he's yeah, feeling he doesn't grief. Know. Yeah, he just doesn't understand what grief yep. is, or whether it's a disease or whatever kind of. Yeah. And that's what I thought. Alas, he's slowly but surely figuring it out. Himself, yeah. So. yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Because if you guys remember, I think it might have happened in the first book, but we really saw it in the second book, especially once uh, Pallas died. His emotions like regret and other sp specific feelings would come out as a physical sensation, like a pain in his chest. Mm, yeah. Mm. And so and he didn't know what they were. He's like, I have this mm. pain in my chest. I think I'm sick. Yeah. And so he didn't know like what that was but the rest of us were like oh yeah that's the pain of like loss or grief or whatever yeah. um and so you know i i definitely believe that he he always had them but he has repressed them to such an extent the same way that he has learned to repress his uh like the tattoos that are on him yeah yes, it's just like a, a sub subconscious suppression of those things yeah, yeah. exactly mm. there's a moment here that i just I think is so wild. We've been waiting for him to make a mage relay for like oh, yeah. two books now. And Motherfucker makes a mobile phone, dude. He makes a cell phone. <laughs> Holy shit. Uh, yeah. yeah. I, I don't I don't know if it's more like a cell phone or a walkie-talkie or what, but it's and like it's, mm, it's, yeah, it's, it's like this it's little like portable phone, thing. Yeah. yeah. And no, yeah, because you have to dial one to call the yeah, first one, dial right. two yeah. to call yeah. the second. And everybody that yeah. sees it, like everybody that sees it, is like that's that's impossible. Yeah, there's <laughs> no way. Thing. There's no way that that could ever happen <laughs> ever. And Reston's like, I made it in like 20 minutes. Like I don't yeah. know what you're fucking <laughs> bitching about. Like I literally just made it like just now, I'm and it worked great. Guys, come on. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's so mm. good. I love that he made Baron Nask the king of Gendishin. Yeah. Like he yeah. just hands out these titles. He's like, like, yep. Take it. You'll do a great job. I don't want to fucking deal with it. Go ahead. Yeah. He's like, yeah. I, I, I guess you're the king now. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. We yeah. talked about uh, Reskin Tam reuniting, him being uh, knighted. Um, oh, oh. Yep. Sorry. Got? One character we haven't spoken about at all who, because she really fell to the wayside in the fifth book, but she was really, I thought she was really big. From book two, she was a real. Ooh, Asaria? She's, Asaria. Yeah. She's the warrior one, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, that's Sarah. Because even the oh my god, when her and Palace, no, not her, Malthus, her, her, her and Malthus, yeah. after the shipwreck go off on their side yes. mission, and she ends up taking over those two <laughs> yeah. echelons yeah, or whatever. Yeah, that shit was awesome, And then there was this man. badass moment where she finally makes it back to Reskin, and it's like, oh, guess you're an emperor now. Oh, guess you're an Elysia, or whatever they called them, yeah, the leader yeah. of the thing that. And a bit like the the Western Battle Mage moment, it was one of those kind of moments where yeah, I don't know, man. <laughs> yeah, these, these characters good. just leveling yep. up, 
you know that, that's it dude they're just leveling up that's exactly it yeah and and that's that's also kind of what i was referring to when i said the cast is getting so big and there's so many mm. things happening i was really hoping we would get more isaria and malsius in mm. this book because i really like those characters i think that dynamic is super interesting her having been basically courting his brother and that was going to be like a whole thing and then Malsius like has this um like this animosity towards her but he's the only one who can protect her life by wearing yeah this stone yeah I'm like dude that is going to be mm-hmm. a fantastic like romantic subplot like that yeah. is going to be really really good and so I was really hoping to see more of them in this book. And I, I really can't wait to see what happens with them because I, yeah. I think that whole, that whole situation is so interesting. Definitely. I, I enjoyed uh, Reskin and Azaria infiltrating the Ashayan ranks. Oh, that was um, cool. Yeah, that was cool. You know, I, I feel like we don't really get to see him unless he's with like a striker or something. We don't get to see him really cut loose with something with somebody who has uh, similar skills to or him. If not more, more yeah. skills. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and so getting to see him like infiltrate and coordinate with somebody who's like on his level it was really, really cool. I, yeah. I enjoyed that. And what um, I also love about that scene in particular is at the end when Entress is like, fam, what, what are you guys doing? Y'all took on a whole out. Has yeah. he gone mad? Has he, he must have gone mad. And <laughs> yeah. Azaria was just like, nah, he, sounds crazy, but I, I was there. She, she's like, it was fine. Like he's, he's, <laughs> yeah. he's fine. She's yeah, like, he's it, was, fine. it was actually really well thought out. Right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. okay, cool. Very, very methodical. <laughs> Uh, and then after that, we also get Reskin infiltrating the quarry. And yeah. I love the parts of the first, like, I guess three books. Well, I guess, I guess he did any, it in the fourth any book, too. Res- any Reskin subterfuge where he yeah. is, like, he's, like, ingraining himself into in- a lower class or, yeah. like, a different a society character. is just fucking awesome, dude. Yeah. Yeah. I, mm-hmm. I, I love his costumes. I yep. love him pretending to be talks, somebody else. Like, yeah, all of it's really good. It's so good, so... I, I really enjoyed the uh, the quarry scene. Yeah. Um, there's mm-hmm. this scene at the beginning of the book that I thought was really funny where Reskin is going to see the two Brants and he, he's, he tells the guards, <laughs> I need your swords. And they just immediately hand Stand, up their swords. Yeah. And he can't decide if it's a good thing or a bad thing because they broke the rules. If they were following yeah. the rules, they wouldn't give up their swords. <laughs> yeah. But also, he's their like king, king. and emperor. Is, yeah. And so he's like, well, he's like, I'll I'll let Farson figure it out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I thought that was really uh, funny. I was gonna say because that that little bit there reminds me of another B character who I also really like. Uh, I don't know because. I don't expect him to have a major role. I just expect him to have little bit parts here and there. But um, the Mountain Tribe Chief Warrior oh, guy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh man. He, yeah. Especially, what was it? His scene with Frisha, where he's like, we need things to do. We are big, powerful That's mountain right. warriors. And yeah. he's like, I don't you, you can teach. He's like, yeah. This is great, Homer. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, dude. <laughs> awesome. Oh, awesome. Oh, yeah. I can't wait to see more of him, for sure. Dude, <laughs> can you imagine like his whole tribe coming in at like the final battle oh. and like you have you have so all cool, these man. like different nations you have like uh you know lon the resh with their mm. their women and like archers and all that warships stuff. yeah, yeah mm. and warships and then you have uh you know possibly gendishin if they don't rebel and you know all these mm. other places and then you the have Polaris, the, man. The the demon the Polaris, yeah, yeah with their shape the shifting animal, Ooh, and, then you, yeah. and then you have the giant mountain men just yeah. somewhere in the middle standing above the crowd with like their axes, axes. Ready, to fuck shit up, yeah. ready to fuck uh, shit up it's gonna be so cool yeah, dude. uh they need to make a movie dude they yeah movie. <laughs> yeah uh, i'm not lying so... to you guys i am low-key hoping i can get the tv rights to produce this like, yeah this dude is. This could be the greatest TV show or I tell you what, trilogy if of I, all time, if man. I, yeah. If I won right. the lottery, man, I would dedicate Ooh. almost Just, all my money to making this happen. Make, you know, like if, if, I, if I could give like eight million dollars and like pay whoever to do whatever and like 
give it to Kel Kaid and give to you, and give to the you actors, know, I would do it, dude. I would do it. Could you imagine this with a House of the Dragons Game of Thrones level oh, budget? Man, man, like, it would be nuts. It would be like it would be nothing that this world has ever seen before. Literally, yeah, the world would not be, be ready. Yeah, it would, it would not it would be, be ready. Incredible. Would Would yeah. you guys want to see it animated or would you want to see it live action? No, I would say live action for me personally. Okay. You know what's annoying, right? So I'm actually an anime head. You yeah, might be able to tell from yeah. my channel. But <laughs> yeah. so I think the anime version of the show technically would be better because it has less reins, right? You could do crazier things, crazier mm, shows, crazy, but just yeah, crazy no. everything and go really into everything to yeah. eleven out of ten, right? Yeah. But I think if you gave it the Game of Thrones budget and the Game of Thrones treatment and turned it into that kind of show where it's like an hour an episode and you can get into yeah. the depth of the world and all this kind of thing, I think it would probably it, would, it could be the biggest series on yeah. TV. Like it could be bigger than Game. I don't, as an yeah. animation, I think it's limited to just being another great show. Yeah. Right? Whereas if it was a live action, it could be the what great, you know, is. another yeah. Breaking Bad or yeah. Last of Us, like yep. the, up there with the best of them kind of thing. Yeah. Could, so, could, could you imagine uh, Henry Cavill? Oh my as God! Redskin? I was just gonna fucking say that. <laughs> I was literally just gonna say, like, could you imagine Henry Cavill with long hair, a little bit of a beard, as Reskin? Dude, I was fucking just about to say that, dude. It'd be so good. Like literally, just about to say that, dude. Oh, it'd be so perfect. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> we blew they, his mind right yeah. now. Yeah, <laughs> we'd we'd oh, have dude. to they they'd have to de-age him a little bit, but I think he'd be he'd be so he could do good. it, dude. He'd he's got so the fucking good. jawline. He can do. Yeah, it. he's got the jawline. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he looks. He has the face and the yeah, look. Yeah, dude. For sure. Big, I'm just saying, though. like with long black hair, like he could be it for sure. Yeah. Dude. How yeah, tall is Cavill? I feel like Cavill's like six three, six four. Is he not that big? Was he that? No, big? no, he he's yeah, taller. He's yeah, tall. he's, he's tall. super tall. Yeah. yeah. I feel like Reskin's only like, like no, Reskin's... even five eleven, six foot. Is, is Reskin? I no. feel like Reskin is like a. I think he's like six two, right? Yeah, Reskin's Reskin's tall. He's six two. Yeah, he, he's tall. Reskin's really tall. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. Help yeah. Him, help him fit <laughs> yeah. So let's get to my uh, one of my final notes here. What do you guys think about the ending? And by that I mean the epilogue where Reskin dies and then kind of has kind of a i i don't know how i feel about this so i'd like to hear how you guys feel about it kind of this weird change of heart where he's like i can be anything now um and the thing that i didn't really like about it is because it specifically mentions that because because he died now he's not constrained to like the rules and like being an emperor and and this whole mission but he had died a whole bunch of times when he was younger so that i mean that didn't you know cut him off from the rules or anything so i'm i'm curious what you guys think of this ending where you think it's going what he's going to do next so i i would probably uh, agree with you in in some senses i think that when when he was brought back and there's that moment where he says like you know like i i don't have to be, because like if you think about it from the beginning like like this this guy was trained to follow these rules right he, he always had a purpose and as yeah. he always never once did he ever lack in the purpose that he had never ever the entire right. time all through five books there was always a goal that he was trying to meet whether that's protecting his friends saving an empire whatever it may be like he was reaching those goals like with right. not even like any ulterior motives like it was just to make that happen that's all it was for <laughs> right and so i think when when he wakes up i think i think he has a moment where he like because as in book five, like he's getting more connected to his emotions. He's understanding that he's a human and he might feel lust. He might feel sadness. Like he, we, he's understanding what these pains are and yeah. why, why he feels them. And so I think at least for me, I think it's just a moment of him, like trying to like really understand and say like, Hey, like, I don't like, they think I'm dead. Like I, I don't have to do this anymore. Right. Like, I, I don't have to, to do what I've been doing if I don't want to, but I personally I don't think it's possible for him to just walk away. Right. Like, yeah. like he he he's gonna he's gonna pick up the mantle again, whether that's in as being the Raven and kind of doing stuff behind the scenes or showing himself again to his teammates. I just I just don't think that it's in him to like go live a quiet life, which which nobody does, right? Like he, right. there's no way that it, that's gonna happen. Yeah. Um, but I feel for his thoughts when he says like I don't have to do this because I'm like, could you imagine being pressured all literally every second from the day you were a year old up until now to like just be the best of best of better than everybody ever was 
you know, at these things, um, mm. it would just stress me out. So I could see like that moment of just being like pure, just like happiness where it's like, I don't, I don't, I don't have, have to. to, I don't have to, like, yeah. I don't have to, dude. I don't yeah. have to do it, but he will. See, and, he will. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And I feel like that was put in there. How do I even explain this? Cause I feel like, it was almost put in there as a mandatory thought process before realizing, because I think like what you just said, Breskin doesn't really know how to operate mm -hmm. on pure freedom. He needs goals. Yeah. He needs yeah. his rules. And again, yeah. when he left the fort, he was in this same position where essentially he had the choice to either continue on his own no, how to mission that he's given, yeah. or he could have just done what he wanted essentially yeah. and seen where it led him kind of thing. And I think here it's like, well, he's a creature of uh, habit. habit, and it's like, well, it's not like he's going to stop following the rules. And the rule, yeah. rule one is rule one. Rule one yeah. hasn't changed. His right. friends aren't dead or haven't like. So the, the game is still the same, really. It's just I yeah. think, well, I think it would be too quick or too abrupt. Let's say. Oh, well, I think. Yeah. I think some people would have said it was missing if she hadn't written it in there where he acknowledged his freedom. Let's say mm, right. right. Well, okay. it's his potential freedom. Yeah. Right. Before jumping back into whatever we know he's gonna jump back into. Yep. And I think um pretty much like we've discussed, I think there will be a period where he acknowledges that he doesn't have to jump back into the seat of Emperor straight away. And yeah. I yeah. think slash hope that he decides to use that freedom far more effectively than us regular folks can imagine. Right. You know? yeah. Whether that's yeah. as the Raven or just in the shadows or what i just feel like well he'll be doing whatever he's doing behind the scenes until he can i guess reveal himself kind of thing yeah yeah i i just hope it doesn't turn into this thing where you know i i want to see him back in kyle and and dealing with that stuff and so i'm a little nervous for like what's gonna happen in kyle while he's gone but we did get that I guess it is a little bit of a foreshadowing when he wakes up at the beginning of the fifth book and he goes and meets with Tyrion and he's like, tell me what I missed while I was gone. And Tyrion was like, well, this thing happened, but I took care of it. And then this thing happened, but I took care of it. And this thing happened, but I took care of it. And so it's like, well, yeah, okay. So Kyle can run. Kyle can, yeah, and yeah. and it's, it's even said explicitly by, uh, I think it's Kai that says, you know, the kingdom can run without you for a few yeah. days. And hmm. so, you know, I think that that was kind of setting that up. Um, and so I, I would agree with you guys. I, I hope that he goes and does his Reskin stuff for a while and kind of comes back. And I, I just don't want him to go and do that stuff and then never come back as emperor. Because I, I really liked him as emperor. I really liked him being like this big controlling force. So I'm, I, I guess my only worry is that he'll go away on his own mission and do his stuff and then the the titles and the kingdoms will all fall to somebody else as the, these are final thoughts right and as yeah, you were just sure. talking there a thought that i had see it's what it's annoying when I, I don't even like to think about the future of this thing i don't want to give myself hype and then she goes in a different direction or whatever right but i'm just thinking what would be an interesting way to handle it if it was something like because he's not there and everyone thinks he's dead some other nation actually tries to attack Kyle, right, right yeah mm. and i feel like that would be i don't know where what stage in the book that would happen but whenever yeah. kyle gets attacked it would be really really fucking epic if the king would return on his oh, dragon in that'd that be moment, sweet you know? yes dude yeah Ooh, yeah that'd be boy. sick that'd be awesome that'd be sick mm. now do you guys think that like when he returns no matter where it is do you think it will be with this dragon like without fail Cause like he, here's here's my thing. Cause like that dragon, young, like it? that dragon, yeah. it's young, right? That's just a yeah. newborn hatchling, right? So I just don't know like in what capacity that'll be. But I I do feel like that no matter what, that dragon's gonna be with him, either as a dragon on his shoulder or like mm. like a full blown you know badass like, dragon. Well, yeah, it could be. I've I've seen in some fantasy series where the dragons grow very quickly. They do, yeah, yeah, yeah. They they age quick. yeah, yeah, mm. for sure. So that could be. But <clears throat> could you guys imagine? Just picture this the the book opens up and for the first like you know 10 or 12 chapters we're following you know some of the other characters and seeing what's happening while Reskin's gone and we're getting some Ielvenon chapters we're seeing uh Entris and Azaria and time is going by 
and like six months or a year or something like that as time is going by and then the 13th chapter we get a dark alley and a cloaked figure walking down the alley and as he steps into a doorway a little dragon just pokes out of his hood ah uh-huh. oh, dude that'd be so sick awesome, awesome. <laughs> and he's like i am the raven like oh yeah. dude that'd be so dope Sweet. i would love that <laughs> i can't wait to see what he names the the dragon yeah mm. <laughs> i haven't seen pride in a while as well thinking about it I oh yeah it. i love pride i really do Pride's mm. awesome quick question guys and i don't know if this is part of the agenda but um oh, go for it do uh, who by the end this is more of an end of series question so i don't know how many books is planned and stuff but who do you guys think isn't making it to the end Ooh, that's a good question. Go ahead, Spencer. Ooh. So for a while, I thought Tam. I thought I thought Tam was for sure not making it to the end. But with the fifth book, I, I think that he might. I mean, people have to start dying, right? Like people... You would think, yeah. Yeah, so, someone's got to go pretty soon. So I think um, it could be Frisha or it could be Tyrion, I think. You know, one of two things will happen. Either one of I think either of them. I thought they were going to just end up together and just yeah, be in I mean, that, somewhere. But that, okay. that, that that's certainly a possibility. But it, I think it would be more interesting if they really start falling in love, and then one of them dies, and it causes mm-hmm. the other to become more ruthless and more like you know headstrong i i kind of i don't know if that's something she would do but it would be interesting maybe one of the mountain guys the mountain guys could die uh like the head the head mountain guy that seems like a character that would be you sacrificial know, land, yeah, yeah yeah like in a, in a dramatic <laughs> moment kind of a sacrificial yeah. one uh god who else um any of the strikers oh yeah probably mm. I could see, I could see Farson dying for sure. Yeah, yeah. I, I could definitely see Farson dying. I think, I think Kai is going to be one that, that really sticks around until the bitter end. Yeah, we got to find Farson. out what's going on with his family. I want to know more about his family. About his, yeah, his wife. It's, but like, it, she, but he talks about his wife, but he's like, he's like, it's been like seven years, so I don't even know, like, yeah. or whatever. Like, he it's, says. I, I would love to get like what we got for Wesson, the short story. I would love to get that for Kai or Assyria. Yeah, I don't know. Who do you think, Gabe? Do you have anybody that you're thinking might die? I don't know. Not not really. I mean, nothing that you guys haven't said. Like, I, I, I think that there might be a fine chance that, like, the real Frisha dies. I think that that might, that would probably be a pretty upsetting plot point for the whole book. But yeah. other than that, I'm, or I don't like, know, uh, dude. I feel like you guys are being nice, right? Because I feel like, a bit like what you mentioned with the mountain guys, I feel like quite a few of these B, C level characters who we love, who, who are maybe bigger in the first books, yeah. they might be used as emotional pawns in the latter ones. People like Jimson, I can yeah. see him, you know, getting got at some point. Yeah. Um, Malcolm, I imagine, could get got at some point. Um, Farson, you mentioned. I can see, weirdly, I see some, I feel like if she's brave enough to get rid of Palace, then I feel like there could be maybe a few more top tier people to go so i feel like yeah someone like wesson or assyria could yeah. not they you know one of them might yeah at some point for for the greater good or in the final battle or something and then i guess maybe obviously Reskin himself he might not yeah. he might so right although they raised the whole they brought the whole elf thing into him where they said well he could live for thousands of years or whatever so yeah it'd be annoying for that to be the case and then he just dies in the final battle or whatever but, yeah, um, that's yeah. interesting. See, so, yeah, I guess I mean I guess we're kind of in our future book questions or slash theories and stuff. Do you guys mm. think that Tam will continue to have control over the uh the rock fay that he hears in his head? I think that as long as Reskin's deal is in place, that he will. Mm. I think that Shouldn't he, has... he have control over more o- over all of them as like any time his life is in danger because they've all the fay as far yeah. as I understand. Yeah. Have yep. sworn to keep all of his friends safe. Correct. Yeah. For the most exactly. part. Exactly. Which kind of just unearths my whole "who's gonna die" theory. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I'm like, well, the same way the rocks kind of just stepped up when it was time. I can imagine time getting just more power. Like he becomes the gets the fire powers, the water power, all of them. Yeah. Not all yeah. of them. But it wouldn't surprise me if 
more element tools. Came and helped him out. Yeah, yeah came in yes, clutch. for sure. No, I was just say he he. We obviously see that he's got a rapport with Garagana, the rock yeah. elemental, right? Like we know Garagana. that's going on. Yeah, Garagana. <laughs> and uh, and and so like they 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 talk about the deal with the shattered one. Like the shattered one has made this deal to keep his yeah. friend safe. You are his friend, so therefore mm. we will keep you safe. Yeah. And I think mm. that he could he could probably use that until the war is over, until the battle's finished. Right. Because that mm. it'll still it's like so so you know how Reskin thinks he got beat on this deal. Because yeah. like he, did, he didn't realize that it was going to be the Elvenon that the Anon wanted. Right. So I think that that's going to be a stipulation where he can use it to his advantage in the future with it, with any of his friends. Whether it be Frisha, it might happen to Frisha, who knows? Frisha's in danger once he realizes that she is. Anon can help or whatever else. So yeah. I think that mm. that's like maybe like one of his, his, his cards that he can play uh, later on. Whether it's Reskin or just his followers. Yeah, yeah, mm. for sure. Could could you guys imagine uh like Tam on the battlefield being the general and then just like everybody's fighting and then Tam just goes full on like Pokemon master and like Gragana <laughs> and Gragana yeah. just comes out of the ground and like smashes somebody. <laughs> That'd be so sick. <laughs> That's awesome. That'd be so great. I would love that. Cause it would Tam... be good to see oh, go on. Go on. I was just gonna say because Tam needs some sort of power, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like he needs some sort of like For sure. level up. And I'll but... say it'd be good to see them develop some kind of friendship, like mm. where because right now they they seem to have a relationship, but I don't know, they seem a bit right. That Tam seems unsure about his his stance or his role or whatever. But if, if it could become a thing where he could banter and you know learn to rely on Granada a bit, where you like you say, a bit like a Pokemon summoning. Yeah. When he needs him, I think that would be really cool. That would be yeah. sick. I would love yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> the Stone Mage. Yeah, the Stone yeah. Mage. That's such a cool name. I love that. I guess so. We kind of we kind of talked about these, but um, we talked about like the significance of the dragon, it being possibly the thing that kind of like heals Reskin of his uh, madness. What do you guys think that everyone else was doing in this book? Like, do you guys have any thoughts as to what was happening? on kyle while all this was going down because i feel like we didn't get any kind of flashbacks to kyle mm. like we did in the fourth book i mean i yeah. i think they're probably just probably prospering because what, what, what we heard before is like there's no there's no food shortages like they're growing food yeah. they've, they've got no problems there they've got training people training people so I, think, yeah. I think they'll just be happily training and learning and continuing to grow yeah you know reskin or not whether it, that's just as like a people in like their own little society or it's like warriors or farmers or whatever right do we know what the time frame of the fifth book is like how long from him leaving kyle to him dying I, was that a month two months I, yeah i i got the vibe that it was maybe like two months or something maybe hmm. yeah well yeah that region seems pretty pretty peaceful right now doesn't it like right. you're saying yeah everything is it seems hunky-dory for the right. most part um but then you know she can always just throw all the demons attacked right you just pull demons out of anywhere it's right three she's been pulling demons out of anywhere yeah um whenever she feels like it so i want to yeah. see more of a conavan on kyle and see like what he's yeah, up to that's what the, uh, we haven't really seen conavan like he's, he went on this mission to see what was happening with tam came back with the information i and we haven't really seen him since then have we no i i was certain that he was going to be the one to go get tam and mm. i i even had a theory that he was going to train tam to be like a warrior uh that or would like, be cool yeah that would have been mm. sick but it, mm. it looks like she's definitely not going in that direction but yeah i thought i thought for sure he was going to go get tam so many of these characters man i completely forgot about him and he's <laughs> a whole nother res level character yeah and, and yeah. then and then the queen uh what's her name lucilia yeah mm -hmm. i'd i'd like to see her more again reskin's like, mom yeah like i'm sure there's not really much more of a story to tell with her but uh mm -hmm. i thought she was an interesting wrench to throw in the works of like yeah here's Reskin's mom. It's like, yep. oh, shit. Mm. So hopefully we, we see a little bit more of that. Awesome. But, mm. All right, guys. Well, we're we're kind of at the end here. Do you guys have any final thoughts or anything like that? I'm satisfied. No, I'm happy. Great any episode, thought, man. Have yeah. you heard any thoughts on how long... I know you said before, and she's finished. She's got one more book in the deal, and then she's going to try and get back. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, so, we don't... I wish we'd... I, I, I would love to have a date, man, just like you. Let's... I would love that. 
Let's Maybe Spencer look. can find out. Go ahead, Google it. Let's see. Yeah, let, <laughs> let's look real quick because you know on her website she has progress bars. Oh yeah. She love she, the progress bars. I'm surprised okay. that there's a, a real lack of fan art for this series as well. I like know. On the website, Isn't that crazy? I don't understand why this this series has no clout oh, or any yeah, guy following dude, yeah. any real you know substantial. Like I don't get it because it's. I don't get because what scares me, right? If I, because I've written, written books and I plan to write stories and get more into films and all that kind of yeah. stuff, I could create something this good, and it's not like no one cares because I'm obviously yeah, it's a big fan of yeah. yeah. you know, love it. But it's like you could write something this good, and it's just stay because it's not like this thing has come out and it could be it's been waiting to like it's been out for what over five, yeah, seven, eight years for or sure. whatever. Yeah. And it still hasn't really blown into any kind of mainstream where, again, I'm aside from you guys, I'm the only person I know who's ever read yeah, this series. Yeah, and it's much. like, that's, yeah. how, you got to check out Harry Potter, yeah, dude, why is yeah. it global why phenomenons, yeah. and yeah. It, uh, it doesn't make any sense. So, yeah. have you, have I you... really hope this series eventually gets the clout it deserves. After sure. I've been given the license to direct That's it. right. Yeah, exactly. right. Yeah. Make sure. Make sure. <laughs> Have you uh have you gone on the King's Dark Tidings Reddit at all? No, I, I'm not really a Reddit user. So is that okay? Good. Yeah, that that's a really good community for King's Dark Tidings. There's a lot of people that's over there. That's where all the people about. are. Yeah. See? <laughs> Am I looking for you guys on YouTube yeah. and Instagram and, and Reddit? Okay. You know, you know, it's funny because uh there there's nobody else as far as I'm aware that does like King's Dark Tidings content. And every time we put up a King's Dark Tidings episode, it's by far one of our best, yeah, our oh. our most watched episodes. So it <laughs> does have a following. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I'm right. Okay. There, there's a lot of people interested, but just not nobody's making fan art. Nobody's making like content like this. Uh, it's really mm. weird. But it's a strange one. But yeah, so I, I guess you know that's that's pretty much it. Th this was a really fantastic episode. I feel like everybody got to talk really equally. Yep. Everybody was really mm. excited about this book, and uh, yeah, it's it's nice because I feel like, and Gabe can attest to this. I feel like the last, I don't know, maybe like six or seven episodes we've done for the podcast have been not book related. They've all been like you know, either an author interview yep. or like talking to another yep. content Yeah, it's been creator. a minute since we've done a deep dive. Yeah, sure. so mm. this this was really nice to like yeah. sit down with the notes and kind of dive deep into these characters and the story and uh, just kind of mm. get back into this. So thank you guys for uh, for joining yes, in today and, absolutely. and doing this. And, uh, thank I'm not going to lie, I've loved it. This is yes. Yeah, well, dude. We're so glad that you made it, dude. Great. Yeah, so glad yeah, you man. made it. Dude, absolutely yeah. Absolutely great. Come come back um, anytime, anytime yep. you'd like to talk about this stuff. I, I hey, was when I've checked out them other series, you might yeah. be come on getting back. an yeah. email yeah. from me yeah. again. Give man. us Absolutely. Uh, yeah, give us uh, for sure. Give us a report on uh on how it went for you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. This is um no, nah, definitely, definitely hope this isn't the, the last time I'm here. Uh, it won't no, be for sure. It won't no, be like it, you say, dude, it's been a great conversation. Yeah. Yeah, you yeah. you were a fantastic guest. I was telling Gabe uh <laughs> yeah. I was, I was telling Gabe before we went on, I'm like, I'm like, I've never met this guy. And so I, I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I'm yeah. like, I'm like, I'm sure he's cool, but I just, I've never <laughs> met him. So I don't know. I'm yep. like, so we'll just have to see how it goes. And, and, and you were fantastic. Yeah, you were fantastic. <laughs> Spencer, Spencer probably edits out, but there's been times before where we've had unknown guests on. Yeah, like we're not so great, and it was yeah. really <laughs> weird. And yeah. so, like, that's why he said yeah. that. And yeah. yeah, you've been awesome, man. Yeah, you've been absolutely perfect. This is like exactly what we love about this show is talking yeah. about these freaking books. Yeah, mm. super and, awesome. And we love how like into this yes, series dude, you are. And yeah, that's it. The, yeah. like, you know, you've got a you, love for it, and we can see it. Real love, like, man. Really cool, yeah. dude. Really yeah. cool for sure. No, definitely appreciate it, guys. Really yeah. enjoyed it. Um, can't wait for the next. So. Yes, <laughs> us too. <Yeah>. Man. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, that is going to wrap us up there. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. Uh, be sure to check out JKD Animator if you like animated rap music videos and uh, just animated humor stuff. Yep, uh, he's got well, it right there. He's got yep, the merch. <laughs> yep. We'll have that linked down below in the description for you guys. Stay tuned for more King's Dark Tidings content. We have been 
so excited about how much you guys are enjoying these videos on our channel and just showing up to participate. It's a little sad that there aren't more YouTube channels covering King's yeah. Dark Tidings, but we are happy to be your source of KDT discussion. If you enjoyed this episode, please do hit those like and subscribe buttons. It helps us out a ton to grow bigger and to get authors like Kelcade on the channel for you guys. Feel free to reach out to us on Twitter or Discord, both linked below. Our second channel is also linked below, where currently I'm uploading Last of Us content every two episodes. Um, and yeah, that's that's really it, guys. Thanks again for hanging out with us. And until next time, what do the rock people say to you in your head? <laughs> <laughs> nice. Nice. <laughs>